Darla. Hang on, let me tweet. How you doing? <laughs> Get my voice going here. How you doing this morning? Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Let's see. Let me put some little coffee and art little icons and link in profile. Hello, Kelly <clears throat> W, Suzanne, Diane. Said hi to Darla, Gaga, Fritchie. Thanks, everybody. Good morning. Mm. Hope everybody's doing well, staying healthy. My coffee's already cold. <laughs> Pamela, thanks, everybody, for stopping in. <clears throat> I got my art foamies. Patty Tolly Parish and what was the other girl's name? K P K A E P E A K P. So I got uh, ordered some stamps from Art Foamies. So they came in. I think they came in Monday, um, but I'd already streamed, so I couldn't show them on Monday. Hi, Margaret. So I hope everybody's doing well. I just put them out on this paper that I'd already jelly plated on. So, and I thought maybe I'd do some jelly plating just on some papers. Nothing fancy. Hi, Dot. Um, but so I thought maybe I would just do some more. This is I just pulled some black ones that I'd just jelly plated. Nothing, just plain flat jelly plating. So I could use these uh, foamies on it. Maybe a gold or some metallics. Hi, Galena. So, and then I might do some more, but I have enough here for a minute. <laughs> I have enough uh, stamps for a minute. <clears throat> Hi, Lane. So, yeah. So, I thought uh, this is what we could start with the day anyway and see how it goes. Hi, Terry. Um, I'm probably missing people. And so... We've got a kind of a flashed area right there, but it's okay. We'll just move over this way. <laughs> we'll just move a little more over this way. Uh, Karina, Light and Laughter. Hi, Light and Laughter. It's been a while. Nancy, Davin D. I know I'm probably missing people. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody that's here. Thanks for the lurkers. Thanks for those watching the recording. Thanks for the thumbs up. <laughs> Just thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, Gaga. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. So I had ordered some of um, the art foamies because of Patty. Patty Tolly Parish. These right here are hers, and I'll show them closer up in a little bit. And then these, this set, these five right here were KP's um, set. This was a set. These, uh, let's see, I think these three came together, these three, and then this one's a separate one. So I had, I bought three different sets. And then this, I think they just threw in this little. Where'd we go? Oh, we, we glitched for a minute. Am I still here? We still here? I don't know. The screen went blank for a second. Are we still here? Bueller, Bueller. It says live. It says we're moving. <clears throat> so I just need someone still there. Okay. I don't know why my screen went blank, black for just a second. So I don't know what happened. But anyway, we're still here. <laughs> the live is still scrolling. So, yeah. All right. Thank oh, and hi, Pacola. Okay. So uh, I thought we would stamp these out. And uh, on some uh, jelly plated papers and um, then maybe do some more jelly plating. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Or anything else y'all want to do. Hi, Riri. Anything else y'all might want to do. 
where are your foamies? Where are they? They're right here. <laughs> what do you mean, where are they, Riri? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> Hi, Christy. So, um, oh, mine. Oh, I didn't make any. <laughs> Riri, you're so funny. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, I thought we would do this for a while. And then if there's anything else y'all want to see or do, um, they all come packaged in some nice glassine envelopes. And um, yeah, so I thought it was kind of cool. Put that down there. And then maybe we'll, I don't know, maybe work on, I've got... I've got some big thing, uh, poster things I've been working on, and we could do some collage. We can do whatever. We can do whatever. <clears throat> yeah, the kind of like Oreo cookies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, thanks, Riri. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that would translate into a foamy. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> I thought we would do this. So how's everybody else? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about those being foamies, Riri. Um, but thank you. I started watching the Mary LTA. Thought it was you, D. Yeah, Mary's awesome, isn't she? She did a late night stream last night. Well, I think it's about eight thirty. She started something like about eight thirty my time, so I didn't make it. But I saw. I'll have to go back and watch it. But I saw she was streaming late. She usually streams in the morning. I didn't see her streaming this morning. Did she stream this morning, Bridgie? What days do I... I don't have any set days that I do set things, Suzanne. I don't have any set days for set projects. We just, we just do whatever. <laughs> if you have a color book you'd like me to color in, I can, um, you know, put it in, you know, put it on my list. But I can't tell you what day we're going to do what. So, but is there, a, is there a color book that you would like to see me work in? I will write it down. Oh, she usually finishes up about 8.30, Fritchie. Yeah, she comes on before me. But I didn't see, a, I didn't get a notification this morning that she was on. And excuse a squeaky chair. My, I do have an old squeaky chair. It's like 25 years old. But it's so comfortable. I don't care if it squeaks. Um... So, hi, Crafter Sanamentula. I know I'm not saying that right. Crafter Sana. Hi, Christy Color. Uh, let's see. Welcome, Crafter Sana or Santa, whichever. Sana or Santa. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if you uh, have a color book you'd like me to you'd like me to color in Suzanne, I probably have it or one close enough to it. <laughs> I still have my sister. Oh, that is time for a new one. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Hi, Janice. Anybody I missed? Let me put my hand here so y'all know there's a person here. I need to try to do a face to face so soon. Uh, maybe do some collage sorting or something. So since, you know, I only do one camera, so I have to either put it on me or on my on my face. <laughs> Can I work on a coloring book with girl pen? I don't know what girl pen is. Girl pen. I don't know what that is, Kelly Watley. Uh, dot, my cleaner came out this morning for the first time since march oh your house cleaner oh okay <laughs> i didn't know what you meant dot my cleaner came back oh well good <laughs> let's see i need some more ideas of what to read okay fritchie if you want me to show some books tell me what you're interested in i'm gonna write this down fritchie Fritchie, books. What what kind of medium are you interested in, Fritchie? Um, yeah, I have tons of collage. I don't know how, how big of a collage we could do today, Lizbeth, because usually 
you know, I'm only streaming for about three, three and a half hours. If I make a big collage, I'll show a couple of my big ones. Um, <clears throat> it takes a long time. It takes the full, and then I usually don't even finish because they take a long time, especially if I add my own, my own paintings to them. Uh, oh, you like everything. Well, that, that narrows it down, Fritchie. <laughs> uh, I got hundreds of books, Fritchie. I couldn't, I wouldn't know what to pick. Um, I did that, Diane, I did that about two weeks ago. I showed collage books about two weeks ago, maybe three. Yeah, go look in my collage playlist. I have playlists, guys. I have like 20 playlists. If you're interested in anything specific, go look in my playlist and I probably have a video or a hundred <laughs> or a hundred on it. I, I have over a thousand videos, um, <coughs> maybe 1,200. I took down, well, I put privatized um, a few hundred of them when uh, when YouTube starts saying, these can't, your videos can't be made for children. Well, none of my videos were made for children. But some of them I, I put on private just so that I didn't have to deal with any, you know, issues with that. But I still have, I don't know, 1,000, 1,200 videos up. There's, there's a lot on every topic. Um, hi, G. Uh, let's see. I know I'm missing people. You've seen them all. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, I'll show some of my uh, collage here. Let me move the camera back. Oh, let me move it out because uh, let's see how far can I go back out. That's probably about as far as I can go back. <clears throat> I'll show some of my big collages here. Let's see. While we're just kind of hanging. <clears throat> These aren't the ones that are even rolled up, but I'll show a couple here. Let's see. Let me flip through this portfolio. Oh, there's one I haven't pulled for a while. Okay, let's see what else. Um, I'm just flipping through one of my portfolios here. And I don't have all my animal posters out, but I have one. Let's see, where's the other? I do with my other rolled up ones. I don't know. Where, oh, there they are. All right, let me see if I can show you these big ones first. <clears throat> and we've done these on the stream. They're probably not going to fit under the camera. Hi, Erica. Anybody else I miss? So these are really big. You'll see. Like this, they're huge, and they're gonna flash out because I don't have the light adjust. I have the light uh, adjusting turned off, um, auto light. So anyway, there's this. See how big they are? See my hand? <laughs> so I've done big ones like this, and that this one and these big ones I have rolled up. I did all these on stream. These have all been done on stream. I can't even get this one on roll. Oops, sorry. But anyway, they're huge. Uh, that, it's hard to show them on camera because they're so big. This one, we did this one not too long ago. And again, it's going to be too tall to fit under the camera. But, uh, so you can see, we did a whole world here, and uh, it's, it's big, <laughs> it's big, I don't even know, let's see, where's the little one here, a little bigger. so it's probably 15, 20 about 24 by 12 24 36 24 by 36 something like that they're huge posters hi sister woman donna um 
<laughs> as wrapping paper. <laughs> uh, then I have some smaller ones. Let me put these over here. Hang on, I gotta make some room. Roll this one back up. I have some small, well, I say smaller. This one is still pretty big. So this one, I drew the, um, painted the lemurs. So we painted this section here. Well, it's all paint at the base, but these guys are painted. And then we collaged a whole circus around them. So this one is, uh, this one was fun. There's a video on this. Hi, Faithful Miss, Azure, Sherry Ann, Tracy. I'm probably missing a whole bunch of people. Thanks, everybody. We're just talking about different collages. So um, this one, this one's pretty big as well, as you can see. But there's a video on that one. Let's see. There's another big one. Let's let the light adjust. So this is another fairly large one. I'll readjust, have to readjust the light once we're done with this. Um, here's a square one. <clears throat> so did this one here. So it's collage and mixed media. So lots of paint. All the color you see is paint. <clears throat> So I really like this one too. And let's see. And here's one we did. We used, um, what do you call it? Uh, we, we did a giant napkin, like how I use my, in my napkin journal. We used napkins and some Juliet Crane girls. So here's this one. This was a giant, this is a giant napkin journal page. A giant napkin journal page. You haven't copied the closet sauce the first. Um, okay, thanks. Thanks, Jonna. Thank you. But the screen is really pixelated. Well, I don't know. Should I leave and come back? Is it pixelated or is I'm, it's a bit out of focus? Um, let's see. Let's put on autofocus for a minute. Does that help? When I auto-focused it, did that help any? I might be moving things in and out so quick. It might not be liking that. <laughs> it might not be liking that I'm moving things in and out so quickly. You know, camera doesn't, you know, they don't want, it doesn't like that. That did help? Okay, let me know if it's still doing it. So there's this one. You think it's the posters moving so quick, so I need to move slower? Is that what I need to do? <laughs> Let's just move slower. <laughs> and then this one I made um, prints out of, so to give to uh, people that supported the channel. This was from a couple months ago. Hi, Linda. So this was my uh, blue jay in space that caught a snake. So he's got the snake right there. There's the rattler. Chopped off the end. <laughs> um, and then this one's one of my older ones. This is um, my peace sloth. I've shown this a few times. So this is mostly all paint. He's, he's completely painted. And then um, some collage, little bits of collage here and here. And his headband's collage. A piece of the guitar is uh, collage, but the rest is all paint. So, yeah, I'm about a snail pace. So, yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> and then I pull one here that this is how I did a collage using a color book page. So she is a color book girl out of a color book. And then added other uh, elements and made it a collage out of a out of a color book girl. And there's lots of 
glitter on her. So, yeah. So, anyway, there's some collages that have done the last, you know, whatever, couple years. Oh, here's another one. Oh, that, well, I think I showed you enough. My camera doesn't like it when we do that, I guess. Let me go zoom back in one. And, um, oops, not that far. Right about there, I think. Or is that where I was already? Let's see. I better zoom in. One more. Let's see. How's that look? Is that too close? Right about there, I think. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and autofocus again. How's that look? Oh, Gaga Toots, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much. I I have your address right, Gaga. So I can send you a thank you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Very, very thoughtful. Thanks so much. I don't know if it's Aussie dollars or pounds, but whatever it is, thank you, Gaga. <laughs> thank you. Make sure I have your address. Okay, well, I'm going to... Uh, I have a few. I have a. I only have a few left to send out. Um, I'm trying to keep up. Every two weeks, I try to do a mailing for uh, those that super chat or PayPal tip jar me. So thank you so much, Gaga. Very sweet. Thank you. I know, right, Lizbeth? There we go. Thank you. I know everybody's going all oh, thing. It's pounds. Okay. Thank you, Gaga. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, Suzanne. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, we can go ahead and get started. And um, so, again, I, I ordered these art foamies when um, Patty Tolly Parrish did a show showing her new art foamies. And I've already used them, so they've got some paint still, a little bit of paint on them. So if you see those little white flecks, that's just a little bit of paint that I haven't got completely off of it. Hi, Kenny. How you doing? Hi, Louise. Anybody else I missed? Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks to all you watching. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so hopefully we are. I hear you, baby girl. She's meowing. So these are some just plain jelly plates that I had done on some paper. Now, this paper right here, I have no idea what it is. I got a stack of it at a yard sale years ago. And I said, well, it's just the perfect size for my small jelly plates. Let me get over here. <clears throat> so my small jelly plate is just the perfect size. These papers were already cut. I don't know where they're from. Uh, but I've had these for years. They're kind of like worn on the edges. They just looked a little distressed. Oh, the screen is fuzzy again. I don't know, guys. Um, let me do another autofocus. That's all I can do. Let's. Okay. Did that help? Okay, let me know, guys, if that, I did an auto, folks. The only other thing I can do is leave real quick and come back. It's kind of, no, nothing's loose. Do I need to leave and come, try to leave and come back? Let me try to do that, because I can leave and come back. All right, hang on. Let's see, what do I do? Um, leave studio. Uh, if I disconnect you guys, I'll come back. I'm going to try to leave studio and come back. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, let's see if this helped. Did that help? Okay. That help? <laughs> we will see. <clears throat> I'll wait for someone to answer. Yes, it helped? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened at the very beginning. My screen went black for just like literally one second. Okay, so we're back. So all that uh, collage, all that collage I showed you was for not. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I should have tried that earlier. I should have left and came back earlier, but we didn't know. All right, no more blurry. Okay. All right. Well, if it's really bad, I'll have to look at the, I'll look at the, I don't edit my videos, but if it's real bad for like 20, 25 minutes, I might cut that off. I don't know. We'll see. Was it really, really bad the whole time? Hi, Carolyn. Yeah, I'm fine now, but how was it for 25 minutes, Riri? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. It wasn't blurry for 25. Okay. I'll go back and watch the replay later. Okay. So now I have a cat to deal with. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's brighten up just a little here. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Jeanette. The collage is right. Okay. Uh, wasn't too bad. All right. So anyway, I thought I would use these papers that I'd already just collaged some, I mean, um, jelly plated, some just plain black, nothing else on them. But I thought they would be good backgrounds for doing some of the art foamies, just so you can see them. I mean, I've got, I've got tons of these. So I just thought I would do some art foamies. Hi, Julie Topaz. Happy, wonderful Wednesday to you too. All right, well, then I'll just put a note in the description that it clears up after about 25 minutes. All right, so um, let's move this out of the way. And let's see. Let's get a couple colors of paint just to play here with the art foamies. So... You're going to have to move over just a little bit, baby, so Mama can get in here. <laughs> so we'll do some gold and some metallic blue. Um, I'm not sure how much this will show up on the black, but we'll test it. I'm going to do both these colors. All right. <clears throat> let's start with the gold. And let's start with Patty's here. Uh, Patty, I've ordered two sets. So if you go to uh, Art Foamies. And a Pacola or any, you know, whoever wants to put in a link. Well, I don't know what kind of paper it is. Yeah. Um, I bought it at a yard sale. I don't know. It's kind of a textury paper. I have no clue. I, I bought it probably 20 years ago. I have a stack of it. Let me see. Where is it? stack of it i got in a yard sale i probably paid a dollar <laughs> so i have no idea no idea what kind of paper it's textury it's very thin it's very thin um it's pretty sturdy let's see if i can well i if i tear it on the grain it rips easy on the grain so anyway yeah um so i have no idea what kind of paper it is but it's old <laughs> I am back. So anyway, I jelly plated um, a bunch of them just with just black, just plain black. And um, <clears throat> just so I could art foamy on them. So um, these are ones that I got. These are two sets that I bought of Patty, Tolly Parishes. This one, and I'm going to stamp them out so you'll see them better. And then these three came in a set. And then these five, these came in a set from, um, what was her name again? Uh, hang on, I got it on my receipt. K-P, K-A-E-P-E-A, K-P. 
design this set. So these all came in one, and then they just sent me a little house. So, yeah. Thank you, Bacola. Let's put that up. There's the, it's just artfoamies.com. So that's pretty easy. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so I'll leave that there for a minute. So I've already, like I said, I've already um, just jelly plated, just black, just rolled it out, rolled it out, and um, just so we could have something to work on. So I thought I'd just do a couple of, you know, a few of these. And uh, so I'm going to do Patty Tolly Parishes in gold. Now I will have to go and wash these after, you know. I, I can't, you can't let your acrylic paint sit on these. So I just want to, I'll, let's see, I'm going to have to move that because it's going to, it will um, obstruct. All right, so I'm just using a, just using a uh, makeup wedge and some gold acrylic paint. If you have any questions, you talk to me, put it in caps. So let's see how this works. I'm, I might need to put something under here that's a little cushiony. I'm going to try one without the cushion. And then if it doesn't print well, then I'll do one. I'll put the cushion underneath. If I put the cushion underneath, any of the paint that's not on the little symbols will, you know, it'll come up. So let's just see here. Let's just put this. Let's see. Um, there we go. So see, that's pretty cool. So you can use it for collage. Patty Tolly Parish does, um, and let me make a note to put her link and the Art Foamies link. Art Foamies link and Patty's link in the description after the show. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's just with some gold paint there. All right, so let's do let's do a couple more. Let's do a let's do one in a blue. Let's do the blue here, metallic. I'm just gonna go right over the gold. And after I stamp it, we could you know do a a combo of the two. Let's see what happens. I'm not cleaning the stamp yet because I've got to go wash it off. You really have to wash it. Yeah, I could keep a tray of water next to me if I didn't have cats. <laughs> or I could lock them out of the room while I do that. <laughs> thanks, thanks, uh, Pacola. Yeah, let's put, uh... oh, okay, that's art foamies too. Okay, so that that's not showing up very well, but it's it gives you, uh, if this was solid black, it would show up better. But if you want a distressed look anyway, then that's, um, you just got some of these little sister? Yeah, I got this set and I got this set of three different um, designs in a strip. So you could use these on a border. You could do it just as a as a design in the middle, or you could, you know, like I said, a border. Um, let, let me try to do one here on what something that's not. Uh, let's see, maybe well, I'll try the blue again, then maybe we'll do a black. And well, we can do a gold too. I'm just gonna try all different things. Just try all different. Maybe I need to zoom in one here. Let's click in one here. There we go. <clears throat> How's that look? So you can see it a little closer. So if everybody's having a good Wednesday, a good week, and a good hump day here. And let's see. Yeah, see, I got it on the edge, which, you know, that's okay. It kind of looks like a... In a, in a little box, but if you don't want it on the edge, let me get a baby wipe. Then before you stamp it, you'd probably just, you know, go around the edge like this, just to get off the excess around the edges. 
So isn't that cool though? Let's do a gold one. I think it's going to look awesome on the black, but we'll do one just gold and then we'll do one. We'll do black. We'll do it in black on the paper, on the cream color paper. I think that'll look good. Remember guys, put it in caps when you're talking to me. You like the circles? Yeah, the circles are um, KP. KP's designs. There's so many on art foamies you can pick by artist. Um, or you can just flip through all of them. But you can uh, you can uh, go in and pick by artist uh, if you like that design. Okay, let's see. Let's do a... So let's see here. There we go. That's got a little bit of the blue still in there. But if you're doing this for collages or you can do it on your collage and you can do them any way you want. You can do it this way. You can do it this way. <laughs> you know, it can go any way you want. And you, the little symbols. So I just liked them because they were symbols. So I wanted to show some of the, the designs. I still like it on the black. But now let's do one. Let me see. Let's get some black paint. All right. So now let's do one. And then I'll go wash it so it doesn't get crusty. We don't want it to get crusty. All right, let's see if I put enough on there. Let me just go around the edge. Get another paper. You like Egyptian things? Yes, it reminds you of Egyptian. <laughs> it's kind of a little of everything in there. All right, so I didn't quite wipe it off enough around the edges, but you can still see. And again, you can do it whatever way. I think it kind of looks like it should go that way to me, but, you know, it's up to you, whatever you like. All right, let me go wash this one, and then we'll do these three. So just give me just a second. <clears throat> So I just took my baby wipe and you know, under the sink and washed it off. I mean, there's some still stain on there, but as long as the designs don't have paint sitting in the little designs, then it should be fine. All right. So let's do, let's move these over to the side and get, let's get some more. I want to get some of the ones that have a lot of paint on them because It'll show up better. This one I did some scribbles in. So here's three or four that are pretty dark black painted. So we can, uh, let's see if the light there. Is it too flashed out, guys? Are we good? Trying to um, not have it too bright, but have it bright enough. There we go. All right. So let's see. Let's do, let's do the gold first. And I'll do all I'll do all three of them. Okay, so again, you probably want to wipe along the edge if you don't want the the little edge to show. Or be careful when you stamp it. Okay, so let's do. Let's do it three. Let's do it 
two or three times. We'll go to just kind of lightly tap it so it doesn't get a, a big mess. All right, let's do it upside down. Let's do it three ways. So you can do it this way. And then go back the other way again. So how many of y'all have foam stamps that you play with? Not necessarily these, but I mean just foam stamps in general that you've played with over the years. Have y'all done that before? Yeah, they are nice. <laughs> okay, so there's with just one stamp turning it to, you know, turning it two different ways. So you can do something like that. I don't know, I probably need to go... I don't have this one too. I don't have three layers of paint on this one. Okay, so let's see. Let's do the let's do both of these. I'll do one in gold and one in in the blue metallic. And I'm just turning them, you know, two different ways so you can see them. I was excited to get Patty's stamps. Let's see. Let's do it the other way. Let me do it side, what, two different sides. I might get a little bit more on there. I might not have enough. I'm trying to kind of keep the edges kind of clean. I don't think I'm putting quite enough paint on them. You use foam stamps, Linda? My ponytail stamps from a show bag. Uh -huh. Oh, my little, my little pony stamps. Aw. <laughs> my little pony. Okay. So there's this one. So there's those two. So you can kind of just see. And these come in a set. These three come in a set. I'm going to get the excess off till I can get, get in there and rinse it off well while I do these three. All right, now let's do this one in blue. I already got black on that one. Well, let's go ahead and do it in black on just a white. I want you all to be able to see the designs well. Let's see, I know I'm probably getting it along the edge, but we'll we'll do a test here. I'm trying to tap it gently so we don't make a big circle around it. All right, now let's go the other way. No, let me let me move my camera down just a tad. There we go. See how you need to clean the edges right there? <clears throat> so you can just take a baby wipe and just kind of if you want it really neat. I never really care if it's not neat because I usually end up tearing things up and painting over it and all kinds of things anyway. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how neat it is to me. But if you want it neat, you know. There we go. That one's pretty good. So, yeah. Isn't that, aren't they cool, guys? Aren't they cool? Hi, Candy and little sister. Bozina, Cornelius, little, I said hi, little sister. I'm probably missing people coming in. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, lurkers. And thanks, all of those watching the recording. Hopefully, we got the uh, got it a little crisper now. So you can see the difference in the size. So this one has a whole square, or a whole rectangle of smaller ones. And then if you get this set, you get the three. Um, you know, that you can turn left and right and make a, a design. I know, aren't they? All right, let me go rinse these off real quick, guys. I know it's kind of a pain, but I don't want them ruined. Okay, that feels fairly cleaned off. Let me get me another baby wipe or two. 
so yeah aren't they cool looking is there something more to use the is there something nor to use these i'm not sure what you're asking little sister is there something more to use these um i use them in collage little sister but maybe that's not what you're asking <laughs> yeah cat and paste if it was just ink it was just ink i probably wouldn't and maybe i should do some with ink too um the ink's not going to get in the little crevices you know the ink won't get in the crevices and hurt the stamp now if you use stays on you know stays on can is not they can it can break down acrylic i don't know about these um but let me i'll get a couple of uh stamp pads out too but when i'm putting it up on paint like this this was black paint jelly plated black paint then i wanted to use acrylic paints metallics on them because they just look cool especially if you tear them up all right so now let's go ahead and do a couple of um Let's see. Let me get five because I got five of the circle ones. So we'll, I'll just pick five just so you can see them. I want you to see them. Let's see. Let's get a little darker one here. I just want you all to see the uh, stamps. So let me get these five here. This These five come in a set. And these I'd like to use like for planets, not to use on these. Is there something not to, oh, not to use? Well, I don't know. Like, what would you think not to use, sister, little sister? I'm not sure what not to use on them. Um, probably, I mean, stays on ink may not be the best. But, uh, yeah, just regular stamping ink will be fine. Which, you know, like the distressed inks or something. So, again... I want to make sure that there's not something around the edges. This looks like uh, the moon as, as Swiss cheese. <laughs> right? And then you could take something like it. And I have different little tubes and things like this that you could add extra little things to it, you know. You could just add little... designs around it <laughs> but anyway uh so there's that design hi cb all right and then let's see let's um let's see if i can wash wipe it off fairly it's it's when it get it when it gets in the little crevices and dries that's because that'll ruin your design if it gets in the little crevices and dries then your design will crust up. Okay, so let's see. I think I got most of that off. All right, let's test the next one here. And we'll do a couple of prints of the same one. We'll get a nice coating. All right, get around the edge there. So if we can do this, and then let's do another one, do it kind of, you could kind of rotate them and have the design going different ways. Let's see, like this. So you can make the design go different ways. You can have it go off the page. Let's do a couple where they're going off the page. Let's put something underneath. do one more at the top let's do a little half one here i 
And then you could always, like I said, add extra, add your own little touches to it here. Make your own papers. And you could start with a base of anything. Jelly plated or just painted papers. Hi, Gail. Anybody else I'm missing? Thanks, everybody, for being here. So, yeah, there was going. Then you could use this. Just keep, you know, add more. <laughs> all right. So there's that one. I'll show them all again in a minute. All right. Let's get another one up here. Wash this off a little. I'll go rinse them all, all off in a minute. Okay, let's do this one. I just want y'all to be able to see them all well because I really like them all. <laughs> and you can combine different ones, of course. I'm just trying to show the main design right now. But you could combine this one and this one or these three or, you know, combine any way you want. And again, maybe add some little rings. And then this could all be painted in the background, make a whole universe back here. There's that one. Whoops. That one. I could use them in abandoned places. I could. I haven't done it yet. I just got them on Monday. So I haven't used them yet. We could stamp something in an abandoned... Well, I don't know if I have any partially abandoned places, pages um, in process where I could put one on right now. I'd have to start a page. Okay, so let's see here. But if y'all don't know what they're talking about, abandoned places, I use abandoned books. Um, abandoned place... Not, not abandoned books. Abandoned places books to... Um, alter and build new worlds on. If you look in my playlist under abandoned places, you'll see where that is. I mean, where they are. Oh, let's get some more gold paint. This one has kind of a Japanese flower uh, vibe to it. To me, anyway. There's that one. See how pretty they look when they're gold? And again, you could take, you don't have to do this, but I'm just like, you know, something else in there. You just bought Foamy's typewriter keys. Oh, cool. Three inch eyes and a gnome. Oh, I didn't see the gnome. <laughs> I didn't see the gnome one, Riri. All right, let's get another piece of paper that's already jelly plated. Let me wipe this one off. And let's do this last one. Then I have the little house too. They just sent me the house. I don't know if you get a house if you if you order a certain amount. <laughs> but that was nice. And maybe turn the lines going different ways and again it's not showing up real well on this this one's a little smudgy paper but I, yeah you can see it so there's that now let me um show you all five of the designs and then we'll um <clears throat> use some <coughs> just some uh distressing stamp pads there's this design, <clears throat> that one, that one, and these five, <clears throat> let me get a sip of juice, guys. These five come in one, one set. Okay, now let's just get some plain papers, and let's do some, let's see here. I'll get some of the little, I got some of the little pads here. Let's test out a couple colors. All right, let's move this out of my way. And let's do, we'll do these again, and then I'll do uh, patties again. 
let's see let's try let's try this um round one or you could probably do a couple like maybe let's try something here let's do some i haven't tested this out yet guys i'm just let's just do a little of both colors Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, fade it out on a second stamp. So let's put it again in the middle, go around the edge. So these are <clears throat> these are the distress inks. And let's go over that one. You could make a whole. You can make a whole sheet. Let's do that. Not pretty. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, guys. I need to get. I need to go get some hot coffee. My voice. Oh. Um. So this is just using two colors, and you could go off the page here. Let me get a. Let's put a piece or two. As a, bait. I mean, as a. Like this, so we can go off the edge. And make a full sheet of paper. Let's see, maybe right there, and then over here. So then, that pretty party, party, party. Okay, so now let's try some other colors. All right, so let's stamp that off as much as I can to get the excess off before I change colors that looks cool too <laughs> you could put one of these nice neat ones right in the middle let's just keep smudging you can really smudge a lot like that pretty Okay, so let's do another one, and let's do it in, let's say, lime and, lime and teal color. There's this blue. I don't know what all colors I have here. I'm stacked up here. A couple shades of green there. Hot pink and purple. Let's see, and this is the same one there. That's there's a yellow. Is that one? I think that's the same. I got two of that color. So these are all the distress ones. And I got some archivals too. Let's roll with these. All right, so we did that color. So now let's go with let's go with two. Let's go with these two greens. Let's see what that does. All right, so let's take this. Let's do three. Let's do yellow. Let's do these three. <laughs> Uh, hi Molly. Yeah, I'm using um fo uh, Art Foamies stamps. I have Patty Tolly Parish's two sets of hers, and then this set of five are by KP. So uh, we're just playing with different different ways of using them because they're fun. Okay, so I'm gonna put some yellow in the middle. Some light green around the edge. And then some darker green right around the back. I don't know what it's going to look like. We'll see. Okay. Oh! <laughs> that looks really cool. All right, let's do a stamp off. Okay, now let's do it again. Yellow. Lime green. And then the dark green. Right around the edge. And then we'll do a stamp off. Didn't do that one quite as neat, so let's do that again. Yellow. 
lime green, dark green. No, uh, no, no, baby. Sorry. Can't come up here right now. Ah, oh, look, I put that stamp. Well, now we're going to have to do something with that. All right, so there we go. So now let's just see. <laughs> now that I now that I uh, put a big blob there, let's just go ahead and um, let's just go ahead and uh, use that as a motif. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, there we go. So there's that one with those three colors. Good save. <laughs> I don't put another one up here. Good save, CB. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> so there's that swirly one. Time to get another. Here's a clean baby white. All right. Now. What do we have next? So we did this one and this one. So let's set those two aside. All right. So now we got this one and this one. <laughs> All right. Let's get. Um, oh, I should have tried to do a. Let's see if it can. Come on. Well, I think I cleaned it fairly well. Oh, that's not it. Is that it? No, this one. Yeah, it's got a little bit still in it. So if I wet it down again, let's just kind of clean it off. All right, now let's do the next one. Let's do pink and purple. Let's do pink and purple. <laughs> you got a few of these, Bozina? Do you like, have you got them yet or you just ordered them? All right, so let's put some pink. Oh, wait, let's put the lids back on these. Put the lids back on these here. All right. Ah, that's kind of cool. Right, let's do one more. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And let's do one more so I can have a little bit darker on these edges here. All right, so there's this color. I mean, this uh, stamp with two colors. And I'm not being real careful or real neat. And this paper has got a, a lined texture to it. See right there? This paper has a lined texture to it. So that one looks pretty cool. All right, let's, uh, let's try to get the excess off of this one. <laughs> These are going to be cool, too. All right, so now we did pink and purple. Now let's do a teal and a fired brick. Maybe no, we already used that color. Let's do, oh, we did orange. Mm, let's see. Those two colors kind of clash to me, but I'm going to go with them anyway. All right, so let's just, let's just play with these two here. All right. I'm just trying to use all the colors. <laughs> kind of a seafoam green and peacock blue. Let's see what happens. Okay, a little more. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to, color-wise. We still with the tour. <laughs> Hi, Judy. 
Let's see, I said hot cat and paste. I know I'm missing people coming in. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks to all the lurkers and anybody watching the recording. If you caught the very first 20 minutes, I think we're a little fuzzy, but I think we cleared it up. All right, so there. Now let's do a couple of lighter ones. If I can not press too hard and just do a couple light ones, maybe lighter. Nah, see, then I didn't get a print. So, and again, you could always go in there with some other tool and do um, do some more. Let me put my two sponges in water because they're getting crusty. All right, let's see. In my paint jar. Let's do uh, let's do some black. Let's see what happens with some black little, little circles here and there. This paint's starting to dry. It's starting to crust. It's starting to get crusty. So you make your own pattern paper. <laughs> so yeah. Use foamies on gel printing. Yeah, that's what Patty Tolly Parish does with hers. Uh, and all these bases, these are all just jelly plated bases just to have something, some textury stuff to do the foamies on. But I did pull my jelly plate out to use if we, I just pulled the, I have a large one and a small one and I just pulled the small one out because that's the size that I use to make these. So Okay, so let's see. Have one more, I think. Let's wash this one off. And kind of just clean it off a little. And the last one is this one. All right, let's see. Let's get another paper. And two more colors. Let's do this blue and an olive, maybe. Or no, let's do blue and bright green. Let's do those two. All right, let's see. Let's just kind of do a half and half. See what this looks like. And turn it different ways so that it like makes a design go in different angles. <laughs> I think it's pretty. I saw stamps on jelly plane. You just have to clean them fast. Yeah, especially with the paint. When you roll out the paint, put them in the paint. Yeah, that's why I went and washed. Uh, that's why I went and washed them off a minute ago. So that the paint, the acrylic paint, didn't sit on them. I'm just kind of turning it different ways. So anyway, there we go. That was kind of a cool effect. And you just play, I mean, you can do so many things with them, right? All right, so kind of clean them off a little. So there's the five different shapes. Using some different colors. This one's got that, that black paint is still wet, so... Yeah. Thanks, Riri. <laughs> okay, so there's those. Um, and again, here they are with some uh, gold paint, gold acrylic paint on just some black. And then here are some of patty these are these are patties here with these designs oh let me stamp a couple of those out too 
so you can see them in color and not just with the acrylic paint. All right, so let's move these to the side and some more papers. And let's do Patty stamps here, Patty Tolly Parishes. Let's do them with a couple colors. Let's do um, yellow green and a dark green. Let's do those colors. So maybe we can do a fade down, you know, like a. Ombre like type thing. Thanks, everybody, for hanging in there. Green and blue is your favorite, Jerry. Okay, so here we go. And it can go either way. The designs can go either way. But there they are with a couple of colors. Let's do, let's do, um, let me kind of tap off some of that color. Let's do another color. Let's do, um, let's do pink and purple. Uh, yeah, we'll just do pink and purple. I just want them to show up for you. There's probably a little bit of green still left on them. And there are pink and purple. And again, you can do it this way. You can do it any way you want. You know, especially if you're going to tear them up. The ones with the black background and gold remind me of these space scenes. Yeah, see, that's what I thought about all these when I bought them, that I can use them for planets. When I bought them, I had that in mind. Patties, I just like the, you know, the odd designs, the symbols. All right, let's do um, let's do these here, and again we can do we can rotate them. Let's see, let's do uh, an orange and red here. Well, let's do yellow, orange, and red. Let's see, let's do a yellow, an orange, and a red. And I don't know if I've got enough on here. This might you always want to test a couple of them, All right? See, it's still got water in here. I have some water in there because I just washed this one, remember? So there's a little bit of water still there. Now let's do this one again. Um, let me get a paper towel. Get rid of the excess moisture because uh, I just washed these. All right, let's try this again. Yellow. Orange and red. There, yeah, that's a little better. I'm Mama Four. All right. So let's just do three of them while we're at it. So I can use these later in some form or fashion. And some red. And you can always turn them upside down, right side up. The other way. Okay, there's those. So that's this one. I'm going to put it aside So I'm going to go wash all of them in just a minute. All right, so I washed these earlier. Let's make sure there's no excess water. All right, let's put the lids back on these. And let's do some blues and greens here. All right. All right, let's see what this one looks like. Oh, that looks pretty. Again, there's a little bit of water still in there. All right, let's go do it again here. Let's do them both ways. So there's the green, the turquoise, and the blue. Oops, come back here. 
All right, let's put this one over here, and then we'll turn it over. All right, let's do it again. Now we'll turn this over the other way. So yeah. All right, so there's that one. And let's do this last one again. Oh no, we still have to do this one too. We have do we do yeah, we did that one. Okay. So let's do this one now. Let's do this one in. We did pink, yellow. Let's do um, let's do orange. No, we did orange. Well, let's do two odd colors, like you wouldn't think go together, orange and purple, just to have it show up to really different colors. Orange. So we'll do two of them going this way, and then we'll turn it over. I love these designs. Don't y'all love these designs by Patty? Well, and KP. I love these symbolic ones. All right, I'm going to turn it over. Yeah, the Egyptian. Okay, we'll do what we'll do one more of that one. And we'll do it in orange and uh, purple. And there might still be some other colors on there, so I don't know. We'll see. Let's go across. Let's go like this. Let's go this way. And then let's go this way. Yeah, like hieroglyphs, yeah. So yeah, I really I really like these stamps. And then again, you can use them in um, on your jelly plating. Let's just do a couple of those real quick. Let's see. While my stamps are all still dirty, all right. Let's put these. Let's put the um, ink pads away for a minute, and we will do um, a little jelly plate plating where you like pull it out mask it out all right so like let's see we got tons of them here using collage all right so now let's take the jelly plate let me get a uh, let me get a piece of wax paper to put down or some kind of paper a piece of parchment just something to keep it from getting too messy <laughs> all right so let's see oh i gotta get my brayer all right so let's put these away all right. Any questions or anything, guys? All right. Um, let's do... I'm trying to decide what, what kind of... So we can get a print, like the, like the negative space. You know what I mean? If we stamp it out. Let's do like a teal color. I'm, I'm just... We're just going to guess here. We're just going to play. But I am going to have to go and wash these out, you know, pretty quickly. You can't let acrylic paint sit in your foamies. You don't want to do that. All right. And let's just have a piece of paper here to kind of. All right. So let's take a foamy and let's let's just do a imprint. I'm going to turn it around the other way. I might need to kind of clean it off. I didn't think about that. So we can clean it off as we go and turn it a couple of different ways. Like that. I like that. All right, let's see what happens now. We just take a piece of paper. I'm just going to try one color at first. Let's see. I might have smashed it too hard. 
We'll see what happens. <laughs> I like it when they have gold on them too. Okay, there you go. So it's like a rougher texture, depending on how you how smoothly you brayer it out. Okay, so let's do let's do a couple colors, maybe. Let's do a little of that and some gold. Just a right. probably do the mostly the have a little fleck of gold in there all right let's try it and, and i gotta have to make sure and clean clean it off in between because it picks up the paint you gotta stamp stamp it off maybe i'll uh, let's print this one in on a piece of white paper just so you can maybe see it better Listen, do i have one handy of course not of course i don't have a piece of white paper handy Well, I have an envelope. Here we go. Got an envelope. So let's put it right there. <laughs> I just want to try a different color paper. There we go. So there it is with some gold and blue. Let's do. Um, and again, I'm going to have to go wash these shortly. All right, let's do this one in gold and blue. I need some more white paper. Let me do that. Let me find some more white paper. I, well, I got room on this envelope for one more. All right, so let's just kind of shuffle that gold and blue around. This one in here. Let's try to do it like a couple of stamps. Let's do one here and then over here. And probably let's, let's just, just, just try to make some designs in here, not just the one square. All right, let's see what happens with this. All right, see, I didn't push. I didn't push it in enough, so you can barely see it. I need to let's let's redo that just in the middle because I want to really see that design. Let's do that one. Again. Oh well, let me get some paper first because <laughs> white paper. Let's pull some paper here. I know I have some copy paper here somewhere, but I'm not finding it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right, the paper you're using to create, it's block printing paper. Is that what it is, Crystal? I don't know. Because I got it at a yard sale. Like, tw probably, and I'm saying 20 years ago, it's probably closer to 30. Look. I bought all this at a yard sale 30 years, 25. I don't even remember how many years ago. I didn't know what it was. I just bought it because it was paper. All right. So let's see here. All right, and I am going to need to go clean these off because I don't want to get them crusty. All right. Let's just do one in the middle here. Because you really got to pick up. You're picking up the paint, right? So... Let's stamp this off real quick. Let's stamp that off. Don't, don't waste that. <laughs> Let's stamp that off. Oh, this is a big sheet of paper. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. All right, let's go ahead and print this off. I might be pushing too hard, too, that I'm mashing down the design into the paint. Yeah, I picked it up a little. Picked it up a little. It's kind of a small design. 
the three piece picture has set by Patty, small or large, that you use. Yeah, these, this one right here. Yeah, th that's the three. And then here's the other one. So just so you can see the different sizes. All right, let's, uh, what else do I, let's put some gold on here. And just use what's left of that blue. And let's just see what we get something out of that. With just a little bit of that teal left. Let's do another one of these. Let's stamp off. And turn it over. I'm going to stay in camera. And then go the other way. Let's test this out. Yeah. So it shows up big, the bigger ones. Right, but the picture got three pieces that has a small. Um, I don't know. I guess this was probably the large one then. This is probably the large one. I don't know if it says on my receipt. Let me look. Um, set, yeah, it's a large. It's a set, set of three large. All right, let's see what's left here. Let's see if we can pick up what's left. Yeah, it says the large on the receipt. Okay, so that's just what's left over in the paint. All right, so real quick, guys, I'm going to go rinse all these off just so that they don't get crusty. And then we'll um, we'll think of something else to do with them. Let me clean my brayer a little. Clean some of that off. All right, I will be right back. I think I got them all. All right, hang on, guys. Let me just go give them a quick, quick rinse. cat toys all around me bringing me all their little toys <laughs> all righty there we go <laughs> so they're cleaned off fairly well you all know i'm not that picky i just don't want to crust it up all right whoops that's wet paint there all righty so I hope y'all got an idea of all the different designs now that I purchased. There's tons. There's tons of them, guys. Go on Art Foamies and um, on Art Foamies and see what all. We're gonna make some space. See what all designs that they have. So let me go back to these other ones here and show you um, KP's designs. Hi, Dana. Julie, the, these are five, these five come in one set. They're still wet here. Let me. So these five 
these five come in one set here. So you can kind of see them. Very cool, aren't they? And then this is just where we clean them off. And then again, here is the patty set. This is this is uh, one design here turned two ways. These these three come in one set, and then this comes by itself. Just so y'all know. So I bought three different sets. So let's see. Judy got some, oh, let's, let's just uh, show that. <laughs> you got, you got some good ones. I love my super tip Crayola markers, water-based. Um, Julie said, I ordered the five set and large patty set. Yeah. I love this large patty set, you know? And then again, here's how we did some gold on black here's the there's the square one and then here's another one of the large ones just turn two different ways so yeah i think that uh they're really here's a whole bunch more we did earlier let's pull all these <laughs> so i'll just kind of flip over here to them here's one on uh, black with uh, blue metallic so yeah So there, you can just print a print away, print 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 away, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you just can do so many different ways and designs. And if you use more multiple colors, that's just a print off. And then these are just not; these are just black acrylic jelly plated that I did as backgrounds to um, put the stamps on. So, all right. So, any questions on any of these guys or what we did? Or I think that was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to see how you can do so many different designs. Again, this is the clean off one. There's one with just blue. There's a couple on white paper. Some envelopes. So, yeah. Um, okay. I bought a joggles just I bought at joggles yesterday because if Colleen and Kathy now what did you buy at joggles? Um now you're off to <laughs> Jean goes, now I'm off to buy arm foamies. Thanks, Dee Dee. I know. Colleen and Kathy will enable you like crazy. I'm telling you. Um so let's see. I'm trying to think of what else we could pursue today this was my main thing i wanted to do the main thing i wanted to do was show you guys um these new art foamies um, and uh again you know you can use any of this stuff you can tear it you know and use this in collage y'all see me done y'all see me done <laughs> do uh little collages and you could do it on watercolor paper you can use let's do a couple layers here just so you can kind of see let's tear these down and let's see what other one do i want to pick let's pick a different color or one that has a couple colors on it and i showed y'all how to do about two weeks ago i think it was two weeks ago i showed you how to do some very simple collages with um find a piece of watercolor paper here something uh, here we go there's a square <clears throat> and make you some simple little landscapes with them let's see let's look I'm gonna, I'm gonna look through my pile here use one of these as a I should take a little more time to do this but tear them a little nicer All right, let's see what else here Let 
and just play with what you made. And then you can always just add an element or two of, um, add an element or two of something like um, in your collage fodder. <laughs> I love him. I love my little uh, old-fashioned deep sea fishing guy. And then, if he needs, if he needs an air hose, you can just do a. What do I want to do it with? Let's say an orange, because I'm doing orange. <laughs> I can't help it, guys. I like to laugh about it. So you you just, you know, use your papers that you made. Use your papers that you made in your collage or whatever. You can just use them in an art journal page. It doesn't even have to be a, it doesn't have to be a something. It can just be designs in an art journal, you know. Could do a whole little strip here of as an art journal page. Let's do a little more there. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this guy. I'd throw him on anything. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, somebody oh, it's just Denise and mom. Okay. All right. So um that was my plan for the day. If y'all have something else you want to talk about, show and tell, or um, do, or somebody asked about some art books earlier. If y'all want to talk about any kind of art books, let me know. I'll pull art books. Y'all know I'm always up for books. <laughs> let me move some cat toys out. <sighs> Janet's not here. Janet uh, had an appointment. I haven't seen Eileen. Um, Janet had an appointment, and I haven't seen Eileen, so I don't know. I don't know about those uh, about Eileen. Okay, so what what else would y'all like to? Oh, oh, one other thing. Okay, I haven't finished this yet, but I did use um, the stamps. On a, it's not done, so I don't even know if I should really show it to you because it's no, I think I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait on that because it's halfway done. I don't want it half show, show you a project halfway. All right, let's see. So, if there's any topic of book, somebody asked about collage books, but I just showed collage books a couple weeks ago. I have all these in a tray because I've been using them on a tray. I'm going to make some space for the next thing. All right. Oh, I had something else pulled to show you, too. Now, where is it? Oh, oh thanks. Oh. Thanks, Mama, for a lot of lurkers. We always have a lot of lurkers. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but thanks, Mama, for. Let's see. Um, I'll think a second. Think of something interesting 
to do. I really just wanted to show the foamies. I don't think I've got anything else new since the last things I've shown you before, uh, I mean, on Monday. Today is Wednesday, right? <laughs> um, I'm looking around. What else? Well, I don't think I have anything else new, so to speak. Wanna, you want to paint some kind of world or something? <laughs> I have, when I was going through my uh, collage, my big collage posters, I have one here that I could work on. Mm, it might take a little too long. I'm trying to think of time-wise. No suggestions, people? Well, that went faster than I thought it was going to go. Uh, give me a second. I'll think a second. All right, let me go get something to drink, guys. I'm going to do a BRB. Y'all behave for a couple minutes while I go get some juice. I'm going to close the door so the cats don't come in here. All right, give me one second. Let me get something to drink. I'll be thinking. Okay, hang on. I got a handful here. So hang on. And I'll just drop my juice. I mean not drop my juice. I splashed it. Let me get that cleaned up. Hang on. I want uh I run up and down the stairs twice. I picked up some books or some magazines and then forgot my juice. So I ran back down. Okay, so what I did is I'm on my bookshelf downstairs and catch my breath. I've been collecting Somerset Studio magazines since we did stamping. I thought this was appropriate. I've been do, uh, collecting Somerset Studio magazines since like 1992. I forget when they came out. And I still have some of the very old ones. I didn't look at the dates of these. I just picked a stack of older ones. So I don't know the dates of these. So um, 
Um, I would ask Patty Tolly Parish, Scrap Girl 12. She does more on jelly plating than anybody I think I know. <laughs> Patty Tolly Parish probably knows all the techniques for um, jelly plating. I am not a jelly plating expert. I usually get Jean to help me reverse it out some days. <laughs> so I pulled some of these older Somerset Studios. And um, let me back out one. I'm trying to catch my breath because I ran up and down the stairs twice. And, um, oh, you got your happy planner punch? You'll use it for so many things, not just planners. I See, I don't do plan planners. I use the happy planner uh, papers and stickers and all that for other journaling, but I don't plan in them. So the happy planner punch is awesome for making your own books. And I made my own with the happy planner. Here's here, I'll pull this out. So this collage book, this is two, well, I actually I think it's maybe two and a half other books I've cut up to make into a collage book. Here's one of the collages that we did in it. And so with the happy planner punch, I'm able to make my own other books. Here's one of the pages we did in here. Uh, here's one I'm working on. Here's another one we finished and varnished. See, they're varnished. When I finish a page in my abandoned book, altered book, or, or collage like this, I varnish it. So we did, this, there's a video on this one. Let's tilt it a little, get the glare off. So, um, so what's nice, you can punch your own. You can punch your own... Uh, and put in there and put in whatever you want into your books when you make your own happy planner. Yeah. Well, I should say happy planner punch papers. Okay. So I pulled it. I don't know what dates these are. We'll see. But I thought since we were showing, since we were showing some, um, put a little bright. Let's see here. Let me fix this again. Turn the brightness down just a tad because of the magazines. <clears throat> Since we're doing stamping and those kinds of things, I thought that some of these old summer sets. So if you're in the Society of Idea Collectors and we look at these old magazines, think, try to think of how you, knowing now what you know about supplies and things that we have now that we probably didn't have, in 1996, 1998, 1998, 1999. Oh, here's a 97. What year is this one? That one's 2000. I don't know what year this one is. This one doesn't even have it on the... So I just thought it would be kind of fun to look at some old ones. This is volume one, issue four. So this was the first year. Let's see if I can find a year. 1997. Issue four. Yeah, so I think 97. So this would probably go back to the first year. I don't remember. I thought there was somewhere older than 97. But again, I just pulled some random ones. <laughs> It's off my shelf. I've got stacks of old Somerset Studios. So let's look at a couple of the older ones. That's 99. What's this one? 98. Okay, so here's some 97, 98. Y'all want to look at some of these old ones? Get some ideas? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? All right, let me just put them off to the side. We'll do one at a time. Let's go ahead and maybe zoom back in one now. There we go. How's that look? Does that look okay? Hi, um, hello from California. Rarely catch a live. Um, Lisbeth. Hi. I, I think I said hi to you earlier, Lisbeth. Did you leave and come back? Hi, Suzanne. So anyway, uh, these this page is torn out. Some of these, you know, are very old, and it, it was also when uh, stamping was very popular. And you know how for a while we had 
uh, scrapbook stores on every corner. Well, this was pre-scrapbooking. When we had a stamp store, not on every corner, but stamping was much more, um, was a thing. We'd have stamp conventions, you know, did a lot of mail art and used a lot of stamps, um, rub red rubber stamps. Bef this is probably before acrylic stamps. Uh, let's see. Ashley, I know I'm probably missing people. Oh, it's a different Lizbeth. Oh, we got two Lizbeths. Oh, okay. Well, welcome other Lizbeth. <laughs> welcome. I'm sorry because I thought I thought I said hi to Elizabeth like an hour ago. <laughs> so uh, there's just some card stock in here, and uh, Judy Kins. Let's look at some of the old brands. Here's inspiration with um, like wood papers, fibrous papers. <laughs> Um, look at this old trash to treasure book, a stamping source book, a calligraphy book, a lot of card making too, art stamp jewelry with Enviro text. Is that kind of like, uh, what's that stuff now? Um, oh, uh, what's that? Something text. Uh, I can't think of what it is. Do you know Pacola? Hi, Alicia. Craft, is it craft text? I wonder if Enviro text is the same as craft text. <clears throat> Different textured papers. And look at these stamps. Oh my gosh. This is with one stamp. So I guess it's with this zebra stamp. And then just different projects that were made with that zebra stamp. Craft text, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know, Riri, right? So this is like a blast from the past. These are magazines from 97, 98. And again, I think I have some older ones, but I just grabbed a handful because I didn't want to stop and make y'all wait while I went through, um, went through magazines. So I just grabbed a bunch. But old like toy box rubber stamps. I still have some of these old catalogs. Let me see. I know I've shown them to y'all before. Let me see here. I have some old stamp catalogs that I've kept. Like this one was Stamp Francisco. Look how the pages are yellowed. This was from, let's see if they have a copyright date on it. 91.92. So <laughs> this, um, this stamp catalog goes back to the 91.92 year. And this was back when there was a lot of, lot of mail art. We did a lot of mail art, M-A-I-L, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, we did a lot of mail art and a lot of stamp conventions. So just some old ones. Here's, uh, this is a Hunter Proof Press. This is just one of their flyers. So, um this is one of their bro. This was an insert in one of their one of their uh, catalogs. I know there's beautiful stamps in a lot of them, a lot of catalogs. Let's see. Um, and of course, I have tons of just flyers. Here's 1992's new stamps. Uh, oh, this one is a hand carved stamp, and, and I think what this this is the first time I've seen people carve stamp. This is out of San Francisco. I don't have a date. Oh, ninety two. So this was from uh, hand carved stamps, nineteen ninety two. Stamp art gallery was going to be at these dates. Uh, so everybody's uh, hand carved stamp exhibition. Um, back when we were doing mail art. All right, raise your hand if you've done mail art. M A I L. If, if you've done if you've done mail art before, uh, <laughs> uh, they're no longer business. Why do you keep the cat? Because look at the images. Look at these images. Why would I want to throw these away? If nothing else, I'd cut them out and use them on something. Um, yeah, I love it. You know, just like uh, clip art. 
one here. This one is detailed rubber stamps. This one was out of New York. This was catalog number one. Paid two dollars for the catalog, and uh, just tons. This was when you would what they would do is you'd have they, these. If you were in the stamp making business, you'd have a vulcanizer. That's what it was called, and you'd have red rubber. You'd melt the red rubber, and you'd take. I don't know exactly the whole process. You could probably look it up because I never wanted to make them, but I just knew that you would have a vulcanizer and you would, you would, you could make your own uh, stamps and you would use not necessarily all these, like probably not that one, but some of these were probably just old clip art, old, um, old, uh, like Dover clip art type things. Not all of it was Dover, but old clip art. And you, it was copyright free. So you could make rubber stamps out of it. And we would, oh my gosh, we just ordered like crazy. All these different rubber stamps. Fruit Basket Upset out of Seattle, Washington. And again, just all different kind. I don't know what year. Let's see. This was catalog number four. I don't see a date right there. But uh, they just have, you know, tons. Tons of different cool, um, let's see, is there a date in here? I don't see a date on this. Old, it's old. And here's another one. This one was, um, here's the, old, the order form out of it too. This one was um, rubber stamp, gum, gumbo graphics. Gumbo graphics. And uh, again... Very cool. We would, we would, uh, we would, uh, there's faux post, science and industry. <clears throat> Should we bring back rubber stamps? <laughs> Are y'all freezing? And then the order form. <laughs> that was funny. How much were these? Okay, so had a key. <clears throat> they ran anywhere from $4 a stamp to $12.50 a stamp. So I just thought I'd share those with you because uh, that was about the same time as, well, some of those are older, but some of those stamp catalogs were 91, 92, then we're up to like 97 here, uh, 97 with some of the stamp companies. And back in the beginning when Somerset Studio, they would do like a, a theme from usually, I can't remember every, every I don't know if they did it every uh, issue. But they used to be bi-monthly, so they have six a year, and um, they they do a country. They do a country like here. They did South Africa, and here look, there's Suze Weinberg. Weinberg is that what her name was? But she was a big stampin' lady, and uh, yeah, Suze Weinberg. She had a set of. Um, she was kind of like the Tim Holtz of the day. She was kind of like uh, the Tim Holtz of the day. Uh, yeah, so paper purses, faux scratch board. Here's another stamp company, Great Impressions, faux paste papers. Um, Barb, Barb Owen, she, could, she does faux po she does faux paste papers if y'all uh she's probably got a playlist if you want to see how to do paste papers look up barb owens um she will have that here's some calligraphy they used to do a lot more calligraphy too the old color box and paint box stamp pads uh, block printing so i just think this is like a little trip down memory lane here so here's some different, I don't know what they're stamping into if they're doing a modeling paste, but you could stamp. Now, if you ever do this with your stamps, if you ever stamp into modeling paste or what's the other one, uh, you know, the thicker, you know, thick gesso or modeling paste, you make sure you clean your stamps off quick because that will crust up real quick. Cross, yes, D. Grunig. Yes, Jeannie. D. Grunig. Is she still? Is she still? I don't want to say she's still alive, but I haven't seen D. Grunig in ages. She's probably in one of these. So, um, yeah, this one had all just just different kind of tribal. 
Egyptian. Here's stamping into uh, wax seals. Um, I used to put wax seals on my calligraphy. I still have my wax seal stuff up there. I've shown you all how to do that before. Wax seals. So here's some boxes and different journals. I should pull out a couple of the old journal books, too, if y'all are up for it. Hope I'm not boring you out, you uh, lurkers in the wings. <laughs> oh. So different ways to organize your space. Um, and then different gatherings around the country. Um, yeah, this was... Uh, this is like a trip down memory lane. Okay, so there's that. Let's pick another one here. This one was from 1997. I had something bookmarked here from, I think we we're doing a flip through and showing some projects at one time. You want some old journal? I have um, old journal. Well, the, the Somerset Studio came out with the art journaling magazines. Those aren't that old. At the most, five to ten, in between five and ten. These are 20. These are 23 years old. Something like, these are like 23 years old. Hi, Jersey. But I do have some old. Well, hang on. Let me get that rabbit trail. Hang on. Let me pick this other poster up here so I don't trip over it. Hang on. So I moved my books in the other room. I don't know where everyone is like I used to. But um, I pulled a few. All right, so let's finish looking at a couple more summer sets. So, hi, Afro-Sensible Sister. Sham uh, Shamna. Ali, welcome. Hi, Katrina. I said hi to Jersey. Ashley, I know I'm missing people. Hi, everybody. So we're looking through some old, <laughs> old uh, magazines because I was doing foamy stamping. And uh, so when Somerset Studio came out, this was very innovative. These magazines were very innovative and they've had their ups and downs. I mean, they've been around for at least 25 years. So um, or something close to. So um they were very innovative in their magazine. Then after Somerset Studio, they had a stamping tent or they had Stampers Anonymous. Then they had now, they still have probably 15 different magazines that they still have. A couple of, I think one or two of the stamping ones, they quit publishing. But they do the art journaling. They do Bella Grace. They do one on, well, they used to do one on art dolls. They did one on fiber arts. They have all kinds, all kinds of, um, here's the, this, this month was a focus on Israel. So they just do different ones. Oh, remember Pergamano? I used to do Pergamano. Who used to do Pergamano? 
I gave all my Pergamano stuff away because I wasn't using it. So I, I give stuff away if I'm not using it. Um, oh, thanks, Devin. <laughs> so remember Pergamano where you would use the embossing tool, the little embossing ball tool, and you would emboss in vellum. And then they had the little pokey ones where you'd poke little holes, poke little holes and make... Um, <laughs> Uh, probably Suzanne. Uh, so anyway, but like it's a 15th century crap. And I used to have this book and all these uh, Pergamano tools. Again, I gave them all away. I can't show them to you because I wasn't using them and somebody wanted to do Pergamano. So I gave all the stuff away. But um, <laughs> so old stamping magazines. Here's some calligraphy. And again, I don't know why I have these little tabs in here for whatever. Gift wraps, stamping your own gift wrap, wraps, paper pillows. So anyway, guys, get some ideas. And again, this was all pre pre uh, scrapbooking craze. People were still scrapbooking. They've scrapbooked since the Victorian days, probably before that. But uh, as far as like having a scrapbook stores and products and papers that you could buy everywhere, um, you know, this was all before that. Little um, concertina books, more calligraphy, Rubber Moon, that was the name of a company, some wax seals magazine collage oh my gosh look at that guys magazine collage back from when paper weaving <laughs> i thought this was just fun to look back through paper clocks with one stamp that was one of their monthly or well, bi-monthly features is that you'd have what everybody would do something with the same stamp <clears throat> Sponging and splattering. Everybody would use um, the, I might have one in a drawer over here. You know, the sea foam, sea, sea stamps. Do I have, ah, here we go. Look at mine. Bless its heart. It's old and crusty. <laughs> but you can reconstitute these, get these wet. But these would make all kinds. How many of you have never used a sea? This is a literal, a literal um, sea foam. I mean, a sea sponge, like out of the ocean kind. And you can make, let me wet it. I'll show you real quick because we have some leftover paint. Hang on. Let me wet. So you get it wet and get all the excess moisture out. Let me get one of those pieces of paper we were using earlier. Hang on. Gotta make room. Let's put this back in here. Let me get one of those pieces of paper. Okay, here. Oh, let's see. Some of that blue paint left. So what was cool about these is there's so many sides to them that you could get so many. Yeah, the original foamy stamp. Yes, there's so many different textures you could get because every place is different. So if you just pick some up, you could get a texture like this. But if you turn it another way. You could get a different texture. It's just different on every side. Let's get over here on these big open areas. So then you could have, oh, I'm running out of paint here. Let me get a little more paint. So this is this was good, you know, backgrounds in the day. Where's that area here? These were good backgrounds in the day. And they all would be different depending on what part of the sponge you use. So imagine this as anything, grasses, um, ocean rocks in the ocean, 
you know, this could be the seashore and you could have, um, you know, sea grasses. <laughs> There's just so many things you could do with the sea sponge. Yeah, they still sell them. They still sell, as far as I know. All right, now I got to go rinse it out. Hang on. Cats would love to get a hold of this little jewel. Put that back in its drawer. Okay. <laughs> so, but you can make all kinds of textures with the sea, um, sea sponge. Okay. So that's what I'm seeing here in the backgrounds. All right. Moving along. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for being here. Gilding. Um, here's illuminated letters. If you've never done calligraphy and illuminated letters, this is, there's nothing to me as a rewarding as a calligraphy illuminated letters. And I used to do this back in the eighties before desktops and everybody could just print their own fonts and print everything themselves. Hi, Eileen. There she is. Uh, someone was asking about you earlier. Uh, back in the 80s, and I was in different calligraphy guilds, and I would make money doing calligraphy until desktops where everybody, you know, and windows, and everybody could just, pub, you know, print out their own fonts and lettering and calligraphy. Um, I still do a, an occasional um, big certificate for our local karate dojo, but for the most part, you know, people don't want to pay for it. Now, maybe the queen, the queen probably pays for that. <laughs> You know what I mean, Vern? Um, here's some little stamped beads. And polymer clay was real big at this time, too. Polymer clay. Susan Pickering Rothmull, she was a, a big uh, contributor to the magazine. Um, and people submitted their stuff. And you still do that to, to this day. You submit your stuff to Somerset. Um, Packer Dye is a perfect example. Packer Dye has been in Somerset Studio and art journaling at least probably three or four times. Uh, uh, Paula has been in, uh, was it art journaling or Somerset? She's been in one of them as well. They're both published by the same company. So anyway, just, just so you can get an idea. And they do, like, they'll do a Christmas theme. They'll do a holiday. They'll do Halloween in October. Um, so they'll do different um, holidays. Or they did. I, I'm not sure how they break it out now. Here's a look. A 1997 Dick Blick catalog. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. This one, Australia. See, every month they are every bi-monthly. They came out every other month. Um, they would focus on a country. So this one was Australia. Crafting Down Under. Let's see. This one was, just trying to think, it was either 97 or 98. I don't know, 97 or 98. Return to paper crafters. Look, inking with stencil, stencil brushes. They are stenciling on this um, ad. Is this interesting to you guys? I'm sure it's interesting to Eileen. <laughs> she was the editor for a while, Susan Pickering Rothmull. However you say it. Here's Artful Journey to Australia. Here's all the different. Let's see what, if they name any companies down in Australia. I was trying to see if they named any, uh, you know, what do you call it? Stamping stores or anything that some of you girls from Australia might remember. Yeah, exactly, Suzanne, Australia. And again, this was 97, 98, somewhere around in there. Oh, look at this one. Look at all this uh, 
very um, gothic type pages. And just so much, you know. Oh, look, paper quilling. Paper quilling. Um, what was the girls that we lost? She she passed away, I think, last year or the year before. She did a lot of paper quilling. Can't think of her name right now, if one of y'all remember. She would send us paper quilling all the time. Paper tolling. Like you cut, it's like kind of like uh, uh, decoupage and but layered, like pop dotted, like two or three layers of the same image, and you'd pop dot it up. Oh, thanks, Katrina. Paper beads, Judykins, <laughs> crackle stamping. Then here are this the artist portfolio look marbling marbleization marbleization marbling here's stamping in uh, I'm not sure what they're stamping in if this is a uh, paper clay what they did with paper clay or polymer clay looks like paper paper clay stamping made a lot of Egyptian stuff was popular. Calligraphy, more Egyptian stuff there. So anyway, guys, I thought this was kind of cool to go back through it and just kind of see some of the things. If you, you know, might something might catch your eye. Here's Australia with different stamps, the kangaroos and the little, um, what are those uh, little tribal, what's that? What's, what, do, do, what's, it starts with a D. Somebody from Australia tell me, what's that horn called? Do, Durin, Durin, oh, what's it called? The big long horn starts with a D. One of y'all will know. Dara, do I don't know. I can't think of what it's called. Anyway, the horn thing. Uh, oh, and paper like the the cardboard. The what do you call it? The crimping. I think I still have a crimper. Wait, wait, wait. Let me look through these. I still have my paper crimper, or did I give that away? I'm not giving it away. I give stuff away when I don't use it anymore. But I have a paper, old paper crimper somewhere. It's probably up here in my top drawer. I can't see. Paper crimper. Anyway, I have one somewhere. It's an old paper crimper. <laughs> you twist it, and you can make your own paper like the look, look like the cardboard like that okay did did your root did your root did uh, okay d-i-d-g-e-r-i-d-o-o -O. <laughs> you still have a couple i know i got one that's blue it's a blue paper crimper but anyway i, I don't want to take the time to dig for it uh, Australian paper toll. So it's it, in like is what it was is you would do, you would buy different images and you would layer them up. Like you'd have the same little bird here. You'd have like four or five of them and you'd cut them all out, fussy cut, and then you would pop them up. And they, and what, so that when you looked at it from an angle, it would be dimensional. <laughs> I don't know if people still do that anymore. Okay, so a lot of ads and gatherings, uh, glossary of terms. All right, so there's a few. We we'll might go through another. Oh, let's go through one more, and then I'll go. I'll show you some of the books I pulled. All right, so this one is 1998 cigar box decoupage. Schneren Schnitten, I forget how you say that. It's where you, you do the fussy cutting, the tiny little scissors cutting. All right, let's look, let's look through one more here. Paper crafters, folk art, folk art painting. I think Barb does some of that, or did some of that too. 
you have to ask Barb about her um, paper paste and her folk art. I think she did some folk art painting too. Probably on fabric. Uh, Barb does a lot of stuff on fabric. The Polynesian Islands is where they're focused this issue. Batik, batik, silk batiks. Yeah, I used to decorate cigar boxes. Mine are out in the garage. I have a couple down there. I don't really want to make y'all wait while I go down to the garage. <laughs> I've got enough books here to show you. Sometime I'll pull out some of my... I, the thing is, is, and I tried to get into doing three-dimensional, like cigar box. Um, uh, like, what was his name? What was a famous artist that did all his stuff in cigar boxes? I have a book on him but I don't know where it is right this second. I'm looking on my shelf. It's probably in the other room. But anyway, he did uh, cigar box um, dimensional pieces. And I thought, oh, I love these. I want to try to do some of these. I just do not enjoy doing dimensional. I mean, I did a few, just like jewelry making, uh, polymer clay jewelry and polymer clay things. I, I, I gave it a whirl. I gave it a whirl. But I did not enjoy doing dimensional. Okay, Dijeridu. Dijeridu? Dijeridu. That's Curly T is trying to put it phonetically for me. <laughs> oh, here's how to make a little origami box. Paper cutting. Here it is. The Schneer and Sch how do you say it? Schneer and Schnitt. Schneer and Schnitt. Anyway, it's cutting these little tiny, tiny things. That's German. <laughs> I'll pull them out of the garage sometime. I have, I don't know, five or four or five or six of them down there that I kept uh, in the garage. I think I still have, unless Hubster got a, you know, cleaning bug and they got in the trash. I don't think so, but, you know. Um, let's see. Journals, decorating journals. Thanks, everybody, for watching in the in the wings. Thanks, everybody, for wearing, watching in the wings. Uh, and then different books. They always do book reviews. Um, Anne Bagley, I think that's what it is. She's been in. She's. I think she still is in uh, Somerset. I got a couple. I got a couple of her books. I think I got a book by her. And I got a couple books by Lynn Perella. Lynn Perella was a lot of these as well. But look how they look like quilts, paper, paper piecing, paper quilts. Hi, hi, Desert Nana, MB, Mary Beth, Dijeridu, Dijeridu. Okay, I'm not saying it right because I can hear I can hear how it's supposed to sound in my head, but I'm not saying it right. Okay, so here's cigar boxes. So some decorated cigar boxes, and you can still buy cigar boxes at cigar. Go to a cigar store, and they'll sell them to you. They'll sell you cigar boxes at uh, your local cigar shop. And, uh, yeah, decorate. I did tons of them, tons of them. Kind of like after, you know, a few years ago, we did a file folder, folded file folders and decorated them. Back in the day, lots of, lots and lots of decorated, uh, decorated cigar boxes but the ones i'm talking about that i have in the garage are like dimensional ones where they i use like almost like a little opening frame and i have a little vignette have a little vignette inside of the cigar box i did those about 10 years ago i think these are more decorated and painted and uh decoupaged and collaged boxes more so than having little scenes. What was, does anybody remember the, the guy's name? I could guess I could go look in the other room for my book. The book, um, uh, he, he was real famous for doing cigar boxes. Uh, little scenery, you know, and cigar boxes. Oh, what was his name? Uh, I'll, I might think of it or one of y'all might. <clears throat> and then here's some calligraphy on watercolor paper here. Look, oh, these are the old microns, the brush ones, the graphics, and the micro, regular microns. How many of y'all remember these pens? Those, uh, those were, uh, 
Those were uh, a pain sometimes to get those babies to work. But the gold was so gold in those. Barb did a paper paste on seven. Okay, here, let me put this up for y'all that want to know. So Barb Owens, uh, create what's uh, how to get creative, Barb Owens. It go, she has a YouTube channel. Go there on 710. She did it. And then on 717, Judy, Judy's like, like, like a Pacola there. <laughs> and those are the uh, some of the times that Barb's done paste paper. <laughs> okay, so calligraphy. Here's some uh, decapots, decapage on um, pots. Look, that would still be cool today in your garden or patio. There's a girl that makes ukuleles out of cigar boxes. For some reason, that sounds familiar, but I don't think it was a girl. It was years ago. I was a guy, but maybe, you know, more, more than one person's probably taken up that craft. Uh, let's see. Paper quilts. Recycling home, the recycling home paper maker. Using, look, making your own paper. That was another thing, using paper pulps. And you had the screens. How many of y'all did that? <laughs> you had the paper screens and you'd pulp it out. You'd have all paper pulp and you put, I forget, starch or something. I don't remember what you put in it. But you'd make your own paper out of like, look, comics or whatever old papers. And the, the comic, the kind of papers uh, that were more fibrous, cheaper, the cheaper those papers were, the better they'd break down. And you could make your own paper out of them. Oh, there's Pacola. I think it doesn't help to have a link, but there you can look up the name. There's Barb Owen Designs right there. <laughs> okay, bye. Let's make a mess. Thank you for coming in. And then here's more paste paper. Um, painted paste paper. Yeah, y'all got to go check out Barb. She still does. Look, here's some of the tools you'd use to make those uh, marks those swirly designs and things. It's kind of like, uh, it's almost like trying to make your a faux marbleization. See how you can make all these designs? So yeah, this was, uh, oh here, let's see what these are. Pierced metal. <laughs> like the tin, making the tin with your embossing tools and how many did the tin? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and some more like boxes and I, I think these were just random submissions there looks like there's that Mary Inglebright look with the checkerboards I showed my I have a Mary Inglebright's biography she's it was very interesting Mary Inglebright if you've never read her biography that's really good okay miniature murals I'm not sure how big these are. It says miniature. I'm not sure how big these actually are. But I like it because it looks like collage. Uh, some more paper, cut paper. Schnare and Schnitten or whatever, however you say it. More calligraphy. So, yeah. So, there's just a couple of the old summer set. I pulled. I still got three more here. But I'm going to pass on some more of these for now. So I can show you some art journaling books of the past. Now, I, again, I pulled these randomly off my shelf. I have more art journaling like da Danny Gregory's books. I have all of Danny Gregory's books. Um, if y'all want to see those, if we have time, I'll, show, I'll pull more recent. These are the ones that I thought were the oldest ones that I could pull. And there's some that are like this one's called the Decorated Page, Journal Scrapbooks, Albums, Gwen Dean. Or dine, I'm not sure. And um, so this book came out, and this this book I know for a fact is out in uh, soft cover now, or has been for a while. But I bought it back when it first came out. So this is 2002. So I got this in 2002 when it first came out. Um, so of course I always start with the materials. And different kinds of journaling, like whether it's, uh, you know, mapping your own neighborhood, doing uh, doing your um, 
I want to say sketch crawl, but that's not what I'm trying to think of. Where you draw, go out in the city and draw your um, draw your city scapes and stuff like that. And um, but they're just talking about different kinds of sketchbooks or papers. Different here's different papers here. The basics got watercolor inks, carving tools to carve your own stamps. More different types of books, tone tan paper. Art supplies. They always usually have your basics. There's the rubbings. Like I've done this with um, uh, graves, graveyard stone, graveyard um, gravestones. Uh, there's a, an abandoned graveyard out in the country from where we live. And uh, all the stones were knocked down and we stood them all back up. And I did rubbings on them. I did this. I think I still have a video up on that. Probably about, I'm guessing, three or four years ago. I don't know what it would be. It might be under life. I think I have about two or three videos under life. <laughs> it might be under that where we've done metal detecting uh, Hubster and I, I have a couple short, short videos, metal detecting, doing some gravestone rubbings. Um, I have a couple videos like that in my life, I think. Um, different things, you know, watercolors, pen and ink. Here's where they've carved um, uh, corks, co corks to make your own little mini stamps with corks. Yeah, I did a fishing video. Yeah, CB, I did a fishing, a metal detecting. Done a few, not many. Uh, a couple of them are probably on uh, Facebook, and a couple of them are probably on my YouTube uh, channel. Travel supply kit with different pencils and stencils, cutters, little bags, setting up a workstation. Here's um, like a little history of illumination giving you some inspiration with old illuminated. And I could pull out, I got books on this. If y'all ever want to see calligraphy, well, they're looking under calligraphy. I've shown calligraphy books on this channel. I've probably shown, I don't know, 25, 30 different calligraphy books. Uh, then here's some different techniques. Now remember, what I say this was 2002? 2002, 2002, you know. <laughs> But I just thought uh, customizing a blank book. I thought maybe y'all might get some inspiration from the old days. <laughs> it's old days to most of y'all, probably. Laminating, altered books. Look, here's, they made this out of, I don't know if this is made out of uh, brown paper bags or just brown paper, but yeah. Oh, you couldn't, uh, Diane? Yeah. Well, we kind of fixed up the, you know, it was kind of, all, like I said, the gravestones were knocked over. and It was old. I mean, I'm talking like 1700s. So we fixed it up and I did, and I did show the rubbings. Um, I have them around here somewhere. <laughs> I think I kept them. Um, but then we looked up on, there's a site. There is a site online. If you find old uh cemeteries and you want and you can gps it you can gps it and you can find if they have been recorded and family members sometimes ask if you find it or you know there's a whole thing and a whole internet thing on cemeteries <clears throat> there's more making some more books collage telling you what to what kind of stuff to use for collage look they're using the old old postage stamps there's some stencils emblem books now this was real this is real this is kind of like what we call our nowadays and when i say nowadays it's kind of the term we use now commonplace book but commonplace books have been around since victorian days but this was here let me go ahead and read this to you i'll read this to you Y'all don't mind if I read something to you. Those of us who enjoy drawing in our journals and writing in our sketchbooks are part of a very long tradition. From early in the history of Western art, people have been trying to 
combine writing and pictures on the same sheet of parchment or paper. And the two systems of meaning-filled marks have existed in uneasy relationship to one another. Either the meaning of the page is conveyed mainly by the text, with the illustrations providing some enjoyable but non-essential embellishment, or the illustration is the most important element, with the text merely labeling or identifying it. Rarely have text and visuals formed a seamless and balanced whole. In fact, some contemporary linguists tell us that the mental process needed to decode text are different from those that we use to make sense of images, which perhaps accounts for the sense of shifting gears that we often experience when we move between reading text and looking at images. An early example of an attempt to combine text and image in an equal relationship is a 16th and 17th century emblem book. Emblems are combinations of a picture, either a woodcut or an engraving, and a motto, which served as a title and a short verse or prose passage. By reading the verse and viewing the image, the reader was able to interpret a mor moral meaning or lesson. Emblem books, which were collections of emblems, were a popular means of education throughout Europe at that time. Um, okay, let me keep going. What sets the emblem book apart from other illustrated books is the density of symbolism in the images. Some scholars consider them to be part of an attempt to create and define a pictographic language, something like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. In the world of medieval Europe, every plant, animal, insect, celestial body, and human figure was endowed with, was endowed with meaning that was beyond the literal meaning of the object. The secondary meanings were usually derived from the teachings and beliefs of the Christian church. A lily, for example, was not simply a sweet-smelling white flower, but was universally recognized as the embodiment of the of attribute of purity. If a person appeared in a scene with a lily in her arms, the viewer understood the intention of the scene. The crescent moon in the sky, a scalloped shell underfoot, or a lion and lamb reclining on a distant rock, all held symbolic meaning beyond the literal. So anyway, that's kind of like what the meaning of the emblem book is. So um, you could do like your commonplace book where you just put everything, anything, every day, kind of like Janet's Beast or the Beast book where she puts a little of everything. She puts drawings, she puts memories, she puts planning and dates and birthdays and, and a little bit of everything commonplace. Well, you can do the same kind of thing with an emblem type thing where you can put symbols and meanings and or you could do a whole book just on that topic. Anyway, I just thought I would read a little bit of that. It's watercolor backgrounds. Now remember, this is, you know, art journaling at its, at its uh, inception, really, you know, as far as a art form that went popular, you know. Um, <clears throat> nature journaling. And I did pull out a couple of nature journaling books, too, just to give you give a variety. I pulled a couple of those. So just so you can kind of see borders and lots of samples in here, columns, different compositions, organic shapes, diagonals, cutouts, writing small. I do. I write, I write small. I don't write as small as Janet all the time. Um, but when I note take, I write very small. But usually when I'm just like sending out envelopes or something, or I think a lot of it, I write less small because I'm used to streaming. So I write bigger so you see it on camera. But for my own personal writing, I like to write pretty small. Nature journals. Um, patterns and motifs. And I'm just kind of flipping through. Bird's eye view, garden, you know, map mapping. All, and there's all kinds of more current books out on mapping things, making uh, journals and things on mapping, like you're mapping your neighborhood, mapping your city. Hi, Lady Jan. So that one's called The Decorated Page. We're just looking at some old Somerset Studios, some old art journaling books. 
All right, so this one is called A Trail Through Leaves. And uh, th I had another version of this. I think this is the reprint. I have a smaller hardback of this. Again, I just pulled a handful off the shelf. Hannah Henchman. I also have one of her small, little um, art journaling books. I think it came out in a little paperback. A Life in a Hand. That's it. A Life in Hand. That was her other little tiny book. Uh, and I think it came with a journal. So this is 1997. And she does a lot of nature journaling and um, like diary type. Like she kind of kept a journal diary type thing. And she, her, she really reveals a lot of stuff about her whole life. She's like really a diarist uh, and a journalist. And she talks all, a lot about her dog and then, you know, I mean, just her whole life. And going out in the woods, drawing different nature scenes. Here she's breaking down her watercolor choices. And her, um, that was her cat. So um, she, she does a lot of not just the drawings, but she combines it with um, like a botanical journal. Like she'll write about the bees, what they look like, how big their wings were how, you know, their sizes. It's more of a, a naturalist, a naturalist view of uh, journaling. But it's just eye candy too. But I, I think I've read this one years ago, cover to cover, because she was really interesting. <laughs> She's a really interesting person to read. Kind of reminds me of Lady Jan, actually. Although I don't know that Lady Jan does this much journaling. But if you've not seen Lady Jan, True North Jan, her tags... She does nature tags. She draws things like this on tags and posts them on Instagram. Very cool. I posted her link before. So anyway, that's a trail through leaves. I'm in no particular order. Making and keeping creative journals. Suzanne Tourtelot. Let's see when this one came out. This one is from 2002. Oh, wait. Uh, the hardback was 2001. The paperback, which is this one, is 2002. So, is this interesting to y'all? Are you guys out in the wings, the lurkers, enjoying looking at old uh, journaling books? Get ideas. Get ideas. A lot of this stuff doesn't go out of style. You just got to kind of reinvent it. Look, the cop is that the called the Coptic stitch there? I forget all the stitches' names. I don't like making books. I like buying them and filling them up myself. <laughs> oh, is Jan sick? I'm sorry. I just saw Desert Nana say healing hugs. Are you okay, Jan? Hi, Zippy. Zippy, you need to come on my show. Zippy the unicorn. <laughs> Zippy needs to come on my show. You want to come on now, Zippy? <laughs> I think I can figure out an invite. You want to come on now? <laughs> I'm not. I'm just looking through old journals. <laughs> Should we drag Zippy in here? <laughs> I want to have Zippy on my show sometime. Travel journals. Hey, Devin. Anybody else I miss coming in? Oh, okay, Lady Jan. I just want checking on you because I saw someone say. So shows you, this one really shows you how to make journals. Really like breaking it down, gluing, cutting, designing. This one is all about making them. Uh, accordion kind, all the different stitches. What else? Leather ones, concertina. Uh, look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at that eye candy right there, people. Look at that eye candy right there. Look at that. The words, the design, the layout, the painting. Anyway, that one's making and creative, make, making and keeping creative journals. And this one is altered art. I pulled a couple of those. 
altered book workshop. Let me see what these dates are. Zippy's not answering me. Did Zippy leave? Did Zippy fly off? <laughs> this one is 2004. And this hardback here is... Hi, Jane. Nice to have a place to write down your... Let's see. Nice to have a place to write down your thoughts, whatever they may be. Hi, Diaries of a Wandering Artist. Anybody else I missed? Okay, Altered Art. This one is Terry Taylor. When did this one come out? This one is 2004. So, yeah. And this is when Altered Books and this kind of thing was really starting to... Uh, can't right now. We'll take them. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right, Zippy. All right. So, uh, yeah. Y'all follow Zippy. Follow Zippy over on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there y'all see zippy's little picture look right right there <laughs> follow zippy the unicorn okay we'll talk zippy okay so altered art now and i have made uh journals out of game boards if y'all have never done that it's very simple to do you just get an old game board. What is this? Parcheesi? I'm not sure which one this one is. But anyway, you can take Scrabble boards, old board, old board games, if you find them like at flea markets or yard sales, and just cut them in half. They're already folded, right? They usually are already folded. Sometimes in fours, they'll fold up into fours, or at least they'll fold up in half. And then all you have to do is just cut it in half and score it. Well, I, I think I cut them all completely in half because I made them pretty thick. Cut them in half, and then you can just um, bind them with packing tape or duct tape. I think I made mine with duct tape. So you make your spine with duct tape, and then I use a rubber band type thing, you know, kind of or elastic cord, and fold it just like a traveler's notebook with a T in folded papers, and you just bind them with an elastic cord, and you have a cool cover of a um, game board, a game board. <laughs> Zippy. <laughs> uh, you're only on Twitter. Yeah. So Zippy's only on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do a little flip because I got about 10 books here. And I, I thought I would just. <laughs> so there's just different. Um, look, look, this one's like a little vignette here. That's an altered tray. So this is all kinds of altered art. Tags and. You know, again, guys, remember, this is like, what I say, 2004? Um, I got to go dig out my old cigar boxes that I did the little vignettes in. I won't do it right now, but um, look at that. Ugh. I love this right here. I love that look. And then if you have y'all, uh, do y'all follow, uh, I should have pulled some of the other more recent books, the girls, um, Oh, I can't think of their names right now. Collage artist girls that have a few books. Out. I have all their books. I've all, all I have all their books, but I didn't bring them in here this time. I picked the oldest ones, or old. Not I don't know if they're the oldest, but they're pretty old. So that one's altered art techniques for creating altered books, boxes, cards, and more. Terry Taylor, and then this Bev Brazelton. Let me get a sip of juice. I got the hiccups now. I don't know why. So, altered books for self-expression. Things started to get that distressed look. Say a lot of distress, distress look started around this time here. I know some of y'all y'all can't fool me. I know some of y'all have been around doing this stuff. Look, there's my heat gun. Seriously. My 25-year-old heat gun. <laughs> Marvy, you cheetah. It's my Marvy, you cheetah. <laughs> yes, it still works. I still use it every day. Oh, but that was fun. <laughs> yes, look, you who sticks, PVA, just a, a lot of stamping, a lot of hand carved stamping going on. Because we did a lot of mail art back in the day. We did mail art and zines and all that back in the day. 
Oh, here's some, look at that distress collage. Oh, I like that. I like that. I need to put more words in my collage. I just don't put words in my collage very often. But um, anyway, I'm just going to cutting outdoors. Now, we just did this recently with Katherine Anderson's uh, photos. Katherine Anderson sells collage books. Oh, no, Siri, I don't want you. No, Siri, not right now. Siri, Siri heard me on my watch. Um, Katherine Anderson has these, uh, her collage books that she sells on Amazon for you to cut up. And we just, we've done this kind of recently using her books. I mean, using her uh, images. Yes. Yes, it still works, Zippy. There's this is a well loved heat gun. <laughs> Don't be dissing on my heat gun, Zippy. <laughs> I bet I bet that that this mane would probably curl up real nice with a heat gun. <laughs> Better behave, Zippy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, let's see. Julie too, Julie said mine lasted 22 years. I'm sure it's replacement. Well, oh yeah, right. Yeah, I'm sure that those uh, replacements. <laughs> ah, Julie, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and then tags. I'm going to get to some other types here. I, I picked a stack. I picked a stack of uh, intermediate techniques. I think these were more like cutting out, uh, cutting the pages out of the book and making, making uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, gluing all the pages of a book together and then cutting it out and making a hole in there to put a little uh, scene in there glazing again this is when the distress stuff started really becoming popular what's a tip here make sure you let each layer dry before applying the next one otherwise the colors will mix together and become muddy <laughs> yeah the same one janice i know so does paula i don't i think paula's still the worst um oh uh, did did i get did i get the finger from zippy <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> do unicorns have fingers <laughs> do unicorns have fingers okay uh other texturing techniques collaging covers variations cutting the covers so anyway yeah y'all saw well i'm gonna just show you this one because i made i showed it on monday Here's the cover I made. Here's the cover I made for the my uh, 11 by 17 Bristol pad. So I made this one last week, and it's dimensional. It's got these are all individual pieces of chipboard cut and and stenciled, and then it got little jewel. I mean, little perfect pearls, and then I even put black dimensional paint around my uh my uh, stained glass to make it look like real stained glass <laughs> so okay let's see what else do we have here we got mixed media collage this one's holly harrison this one is from 2007 we're getting up into the correct decade. We're getting into, we're moving a decade up. So again, I won't show, I'll just kind of do a little flip here. Just so you can kind of see some of the different techniques. A lot, this is, um, what do you call it? What's her name? Uh, oh, what is her name? What is her name? Hang on, one of y'all is going to say it. Tisha Moore. Tisha Moore used to do all, or, well, she might still, I don't know. Tisha Moore did a lot of these um, remaking of faces with the big eyes, a lot of pointy hats and um, recombining faces to make them funky faces. Tisha Moore. Uh, and then, of course, Claudine Helmuth. I have all her books, too. 
So just all different artists and their mixed media collage. Then these right here, Lynn Perella, Lynn Perella. Do I have, I thought three of hers, but I only pulled two. Well, here's two of them. Uh, Alphabetica, this is A to Z creativity. And she breaks everything down alphabetically um, for, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like M is make it meaning, A, A is for antique, M is for meaningful. And so she, C is for Clara. I don't know who Clara is, but anyway, so she kind of makes a name for all the different, uh, C is for color, E is for envelope, and uh, a lot of her tags. You can see her tags here. This one, oh, what did I say when this one? This is 2006. Oh, this is, look at that page right there. Look at that. Look at that beautiful page. These are in little pockets, little page like, uh, uh, I don't know if it's ATC pockets or baseball card at the time. <laughs> baseball card pockets and puts all our little stuff in there. Um, but at the time when these were coming out, a lot of uh, these kind of uh, altered books were coming out. There was, you know, there's probably 10 girls, 10 women. Uh, I don't know. This was before Tim Holtz. But, and they, they were all in the same, they were all in like Somerset and they'd have these books out like Lynn Perella. I think Lynn Perella is still in Somerset studio on occasion. <clears throat> and then this is her other one, artists, journals, and sketchbooks, exploring and creating personal pages. Oh, this was, I think this was before that one. Let's see. 2004. There's a Tisha Moore right there. 2004. I don't want to hear anybody say they weren't born by 2004. <laughs> One zippy. <laughs> oh, we got some real, we got some real uh, car, uh, characters around here, don't we? Okay, so anyway, she, uh, she does a lot of collaging and well, a lot of, you know, there's just these are different people in here, I think. And a lot of hers, but uh, yeah, like this is, um, oh, what's her name? Lynn Whipple. Lynn Whipple, uh, and again, I don't know if these people, I know that Lynn is still around, but I don't know if Lynn Whipple's still creating art, but she would do this kind of stuff. Uh, and she, all her colors were like tan, red, black, and white. That's like all she ever did in those colors. It, so you really knew. And she'd have this like funky writing kind of like, oh, let me go hang on. I got to get her books now. So I can't think of her name. Hang on. I got to go in the other room. I think I pulled them all, but I couldn't think of her name. Sabrina Ward Harrison. Sabrina Ward Harrison's. I'll show y'all her in a minute. Let's finish this one. But she had this kind of hand um, here. She has this kind of uh, hand done inky quality to her lettering. And that's what kind of reminded me of, uh, of uh, Lynn Whipple. Oh, good. Thanks, Debbie. And hi, by the way. Anybody else I missed? So, yeah, see, look, all her stuff was in those same colors. Kind of like a, a yellow ochre, sienna, red, black, and white. <clears throat> all about image transfers, all different ways to do that. These are all different ways to image transfer. I mean, they literally have, okay, let me just read them. Gel medium transfer of an inkjet, gel medium transfer of inkjet transparency, water transfer of an inkjet transparency, solvent transfer of a color copy, solvent tra transfer of a black and white toner copy, packing tape transfer. Have, who has not done it? That's the easiest way to do a transfer. Packing tape transfer. 
easy. Gel medium transfer of an inkjet print on bleached muslin, matte medium transfer of inkjet print onto bleached muslin. So there's all the different um, types, samples. So bye, Zippy. <laughs> Bye, Zippy. I'm going to have Zippy on the show one of these days, guys. Um, here is Tisha Moore, a pro artist profile on her. And Begley. And Begley's still in Somerset, too. Lynn Perella. More Ann Begley. <clears throat> so, and a lot of these people I just don't hear about anymore. Maybe they just, I don't know, moved on. Moved on. Look, little slides. The little slide. Um art in the little slides slide mount that's what i'm trying to slide mount look at them all look at them all soft-sided journals attachment techniques look at this tracy moore now this is tisha moore's husband tracy moore these are his books i'm pretty sure yeah Kind of like a Seth Apter type thing. Seth Apter and Tim Holtz kind of thing. Haiku Journal. Mandalas. Again, if you like mandas or mandalas, however you want to pronounce it. Barb Owen. She's, she actually has books on and, and she sells books, cards, little uh, like... Uh, Bigger than playing cards. <clears throat> but anyway, Barb Owen does those. She teaches it too. So anyway, just look at all this. Look at all this eye candy, people. Travel sketchbooks. Tracy Moore again. When is a diary not a diary? When is a journal not a journal? That's the question. <laughs> so anyway, lots of good stuff. This is one of this is one of the better ones, I think. Artist journals and sketchbooks. Again, if you want to see more sketching, like sketching every day, Danny Gregory is a good one for that. Uh, let me just kind of show you a couple others. Altered books. This one is Holly Harrison, and this one is from 2003. Making Journals by Hand, Jason Thompson, 20 Creative Projects for Keeping Your Thoughts. This one is 2000. This is from 2000. I got some that go back into the 90s. I just pulled a handful. There's two more. Um <clears throat> True Vision, Authentic Art Journaling, L.K. Ludwig. Again, I think another Somerset Studio contributor. Um, <clears throat> I'm enjoying the chatting. A lot, of, a lot of the stuff you are talking about is coming back around in clean crafting instead of mixed media. I'm still old school mess maker when making. <laughs> I know, right, Domestic Fox? Um. Okay, True Vision, Authentic Journaling. Let's see what year this one came out. Thanks, all lurkers. Hi out there. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for watching. This one's 2008. So how to use this book. Each page of this book is packed with material to inspire you along with incredible artwork from some talented artists and guidance on various common art journal themes, you will find a journal prompt running down the right side of each page. There is also a fill in the blank prompt or a question related to the content of each chapter posted on the bottom corner of every page. The prompts are there to assist you when you're faced with a blank page, when you are looking for a place to begin, or when you simply need new ideas. So there's got all the, see right here, there's a little prompts and little quotes all along each page. It's kind of cool. Getting started. Basics of art journaling. Taking a closer look. Katie Kendrick, she has, I, I have a book by her too, or I might have given it away, but she did a book on faces. 
I get a lot of books away, so I never know if I still have some. No, I some I know I have, like my Sabrina Ward Harrison's. I know I have all hers. Um, might be missing one, but um, I didn't. I've never given those away. But I do give away a lot of books, as y'all know. Uh, the deconstruction, uh, deconstructing things, collectors, thing finders, and treasure keepers. <clears throat> Let's see. A lot of step-by-step um, -step materials you'll need. Really like step-out techniques in this one. Relationships. And then just different. I love these. Don't y'all like this? Look at that. That looks like a commonplace book or it looks like a flow book. Flow books are like, um, and it doesn't, doesn't mean like the, the flow magazine, but flow books are like all kinds of scraps and little things that you've collected in a book. And you can put pockets or ring bound. And what it is is you've collected up a lot of stuff to pull from. So if you, you have a whole book of ephemera, pockets of stuff, collage elements, all kinds of little stamps or trinkets, um, postage stamps, I mean, all kinds of little things that you keep in a flow book. So when you go to make an art journal, you can go to your flow book. You know, I have bins. I have bins and boxes of uh flow stuff but uh and you can pull from your flow book and just the just flicking through a flow book is very inspiring that anyway that reminded me of that so the written word putting your poems and words and journaling so these are all very inspiring here's one that's uh ring bound Go through a couple more here. Self portraits using mixed media, dream journals, spiritual journals, faith journals. So that's true vision. Uh, does I show this one? Mix uh, mixed media demonstrations and explorations exhibit thirty six. Susan Tuttle, and this was 2008. And again, all kinds of ideas for what to do in your journals. Just kind of flip through here. But I hope y'all get some inspiration, some ideas. Go look up some of these books. I'm sure you can still get some of them on Amazon. Or if not these, plenty of uh, similar ones. Okay, let me show you real quick. My Sabrina Ward Harrison's. I'm not sure in what order. I think this one is the oldest. Spilling Open. Um, and she, as far as I know... Sabrina does not have online classes. She doesn't really do online at all. If anybody knows where, if she's online, I don't think I've ever seen her on Twitter, Instagram, and anything. So this book came out, I think this was her first one, in 1999. And she was kind of the first one that went over the top with inking and messy writing and very messy. As a matter of fact, one of her books is called Messy Something. Yeah, Messy Thrilly Lot, Thrilling Life. Um, she was kind of the first person I saw that did this kind of a look. Very um, photojournalistic, uh, very inky and very messy. I have another photojournalist book by a kid that was traveling around the world and he got killed in this in the, it was in the 80s i think and his mother published his book very photojournalistic as well but that's kind of what sabrina ward harrison does and very messy and inky 
and uh, very photo photo um, journalistic. <clears throat> this is Sark. You can always tell Sark's. This is a foreword by Sark. Um, introduction. But you see how this very messy writing. If if, if you say you can't write neat, well look. Then use it to your um, bye, Hel uh, bye, Helen. Bye, Pacola. Um, if you can't, you can't say, "Well, I can't write me." Look at this. You don't have to write me. I know. I love this style too, Brooke. Yeah, it's very messy. Very her. This is very her. And um, so, just to show, and it's kind of like her diary, photojournalistic type diary thing. And uh, she would draw her own lines. I'll show you. Wait, I got a couple more of her books. I'm going to finish this up in the next few minutes. So, but uh, yeah. But I don't think she does any kind of classes. I don't. I've never. I don't think I've ever seen her online on any social media. I'm not saying she's not there because I haven't looked recently. But she lives out in. I think she lived in San Francisco. I don't remember. But at the time she wrote this book, she. I think she lived in New York. So she lived in New York in one or two of her books. And now I think she lives out in California. I, San Francisco stuck in my mind. But she did her first one, I think, in New York. Isn't it cool, though? So there she is there. It's very fun. Get this again, this is back in 1999. She's probably, you know, 22 or something like that. So this is 20 years ago, 21 years ago. So I don't know what she does now. If anybody knows, feel free. That's very cool. So, and look, I'm not even halfway through the book yet. It's just packed full of eye candy and her story about living in New York and her artistic journey. I think she teaches classes like in person. She teaches, or she did a few years ago, taught classes in person, like workshops in person in California. But I don't know anymore what she do, does. But if she ever comes out with new books, I will be buying them. <laughs> so I'm just flipping through just so you can kind of see, look, see, look at this. Isn't that awesome? Doesn't it inspire you? Let me flip the other way here. So that one's called Spilling Open, and I think that was her first one. And I don't know, let's see, this one, one of these two. Now, one. this is a journal. She made a journal. Of course, I'm not going to write in it. <laughs> she made a journal. Let's, let me look at the years, okay? So this one was 2005. Messy Spilling Life was, what year did this come out in? It's in the back. I'm not sure where, here we go. 2004? Four. So this would have been the next one. This is 2004. Now, I think there's one in between here somewhere. I don't know. I don't know if I have it or if I didn't pull it. But anyway, um, so this is the same kind of thing. Again, very photo journal, photo um, heavy, you know, photos and documentary of her life and what's going on in her life and her paintings and just very, uh, and she's like what you would call raw. She's very raw about her writing and stuff. So you can see. So again, just a quick little flip through, just so you can kind of see. I know she is, Suzanne. And then this one she made for you to be journal. A journal. Oh, Brave on the Rocks. That's the one that I'm not seeing right here. There's also Brave on the Rocks before this one, before this one came out. And now this one's on matte paper. The other two were on uh, glossy paper. This is matte paper because she wants you to use it. She gives you um, 
she leave, leaves you prompts and things for you to fill out and ideas and inspiration. And then she gives you places. We'll get, we'll get to it here in a minute. She gives you places where she wants you to, she wants you to make this journal your own. She is on Instagram. Okay, I'll go look for her later, Lizbeth. Thank you. So, um, see, she gives you places to write and journal, prompts. And she's got it real messy so that you don't feel intimidated and feeling you have to write very neat. Right? But look, any of you guys, you could make a journal like this yourself. You could do this. Just, you know, she's got different images, magazines, photos, a lot of lines. Draw your own lines. Draw them messy. You can draw with whatever pen, ink you do with pencil. Make some mess. Throw some ink splots. Do some drips. Do some splats. You could do this. See? Get inspired. If she's on Instagram, then she's probably got tons of stuff over on IG as well. Okay, and then this one, now this one's kind of extra cool because she has a pocket of collage stuff in the back. The story is happening, and this one came out, oh, it's in the front. This one came out in 2012, and this is the newest one I have. If she has any newer books in this, I don't have them. Um, but she has this little vellum pocket here with a whole bunch of little collage stuff little collage stuff for you to use some words some little just again now guys you can do this you can do this yourself look cut out words you like or just write them yourself and cut them out little magazine images little photos look little strips these could be strips of scrapbook paper uh little hearts or punch outs so she um she gives you all this in this uh book if you happen to buy this book now, I would recommend trying to find it new because if you bought this used, you probably have no guarantee that all this stuff would be in the pocket, right? Um, bye, Gail. So this is, and the story is happening. And again, whoops, there's a hole in that pocket there. Let's stick that back in. And again, it's her style. Uh, it's got a lot of pictures of her art supplies. In her writing and her messiness, photo journaling. Isn't it cool? So I hope y'all got some inspiration and some ideas today from the books and the stamps, the pot Patty Tolly Parish stamps, and uh, from. Uh, Art Foamies, and I'll put Patty's and Art Foamies link in the uh, description box. Okay, so those are my Sabrina Ward Harris, and I have other books that are um, similar to hers. Um, Avernini, uh, Avernini, what's her name? Um, oh, I can't think of her name right now. But anyway, I've got four or five of another girl's work. And uh, that's similar to these in the same kind of shape, size books. But anyway, um, yeah, I know, right, Brooke? Let's see, Brooke says, got inspired by Sabrina Ward Harrison. I know, she's very inspiring. And the other one, well, let me, hang on, Brooke, since you're, you're inspired by this. Hang on, let me show you real quick. You go grab it. Hang on. Let me show you something I think I pulled two, but I think I have three of her books too. Orly Avenieri. And um, she has these same type of books. And let me tell you what years these are. This is 2012. This one's called In My Bones, a visual journal. I have a, no, I have a third one, but I, this one's 2014. And again, it's the same kind of thing. So if you like uh, Sabrina Ward Harrison, You'll probably like uh, Orly Avenieri and uh, One Artist Journal. I have another one by her that has different people. Maybe this is it. No. 
anyway, I've got another book of hers that has journals. Maybe this is one, but I've got three of her books anyway, that have different artists. This is not it. There's another one that has all different artists that she published uh, of different artists. But anyway, so there you go. You're welcome. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for all the lurkers. Leave me a thumbs up on your way out the door. And, um, yeah, y'all have a good week. And uh, I'm going to try to, you know, I, I still want to do some guest um, streams to have a guest on and just chat and maybe two people arting, you know. Janet and I did some testing trying to get our stream yards to um, sync up together and now that we're both hardwiring our uh shows so i hardwire whenever i'm using Streamyard, i am hardwired with the instead of wi-fi i'm hardwired so we get a better connection although at the very beginning it glitched for just a second and i think that threw our stream off so i will leave a note in the comments the first 20 minutes might have some blurriness to it but it cleared up as far as i know it cleared up the rest of the day so, oh, thank you, Julie Topaz. You have a wonderful, <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks, guys, for being here. And I appreciate all of you and the lurkers. Love you, lurkers. You're welcome, Lady Jan. All right, guys. Y'all have a great day. See you later. Bye.